Before the first portal appeared ten years ago, such things could only arise in someone's sick mind. People looked at the sky in surprise and wondered if other worlds really exist, what do they look like? What can these worlds offer them? The man looked at the sky with horror in his eyes and said that it looked like something was trying to get out of there. And these are aliens. With their arrival, killings and destruction began. People screamed and begged for help. Fortunately, even in such conditions, they do not need to be afraid all the time, they can live a normal life. Because the majority of the population does not know the truth. That day it also affected the main character, just one movement of the monster put an end to his life. He died with the phone in his hand, not knowing the truth and calling his sister. Some time ago at the city museum. The main character Zhang Yuan is a sophomore and works part-time as a tour guide. He stood in front of the exhibit and told people to look at this ancient sarcophagus. This precious specimen was discovered in 2024, and a large number of gold items were found with the sarcophagus, so they call it the golden sarcophagus. The lid and body of the sarcophagus are a single structure, so it has not been opened since the excavation. Well, now they can see what the excavations themselves looked like. While he was doing his job, the girl filmed it all on camera and said that against the background of the cards she looked even better than during regular broadcasts. What a beauty this is. Zhang Yuan approached her and seriously said that it is prohibited to remove valuable exhibits, so he asks her to put away her phone. She replied that she was not photographing the exhibits, but him. He looked at her blankly and she said that he is now a hot topic for discussion. Let him say hello to the fans. In the comments to the broadcast they wrote to him that he was handsome. After a short pause, Zhang Yuan asked her for forgiveness and said that he didn't know, but she would still have to put the phone away, and let her not distract him from work. During work, he answers only work questions. The girl ran up to him and said to wait, she had a question. Does he know what is inside the sarcophagus? He replied that it was made of a special material that did not allow the beams of their detectors to pass through to analyze the contents. Therefore, according to the Historical Heritage Protection Program, they will not open it, so no one knows what is inside. She looked at the sarcophagus with interest and suddenly a voice over the loudspeaker announced that due to the planned fire drills, the museum would close in 10 minutes. They need to leave the museum premises as soon as possible. Zhang Yuan became worried and thought, what kind of unexpected teaching is this? They were not warned about this. Hearing this, the girl happily asked Zhang Yuan, is it possible that he is free because of the teachings? The notification was repeated and the girl asked him if they could have dinner together. He didn't answer her and grabbed her hand and told her to run. But before they had time to reach the exit, an earthquake occurred. Outside the museum, Zhang Yuan heard that many crows flew into the sky and began to caw. He turned to look out the window and wondered, are the birds flying away? At this time, chaos was happening outside, a huge portal appeared above the museum and a special detachment gathered around. One of them said that the gold level portal will appear in 3 minutes and 40 seconds. Anchor point activation is complete. The border is opening. The portal has entered the borders. They all need to get ready. All units need to prepare for battle. They need to eliminate the portal and ensure the safety of civilians. At this time, Zhang Yuan was sitting in the museum and looking around wondering what that sound was. What are the boundaries? What other portal? Did all the museum visitors get out? At this time, a man outside shouted to Zhang Lan, what kind of boss is she? Yu Ziku will be the deputy. Zhang Lan disagreed and said that her brother was waiting for her at home. And as for the newcomers, this would affect her ability to fight monsters. She passed the man and he told her to slow down. How many times did he ask her not to run ahead of everyone? At this time, Zhang Yuan thought that he seemed to have heard the name of Zhang Lan, his sister. He wanted to help the girl get up and said that everything was fine, an earthquake was not a rare thing. They need to find shelter. While he was trying to get her up he said that his sister should be at school, it can't be her. He told the girl that they needed to leave quickly, but she fell unconscious on the ground and Zhang Yuan saw blood spraying from her ears and mouth. He was horrified, and at that time the portal began to open. Zhang Lan stood holding a sword in her hands and prepared to attack. At this time, Zhang Yuan took refuge under the sarcophagus and thought, why is there no signal here? He shouldn't have bought this cheap phone. He decided to use the girl's phone and at the same moment his eyes widened in horror. He saw a monster on the phone screen and thought, what the hell is this? At this time, a special squad, including Zhang Lan, was advancing straight towards the portal. The girl called out to her and said that something was wrong here. It is not right. Is she sure this is a yellow level portal? Zhang Lan told her not to be distracted and to be alert. She quickly dodged the monster's hand, but the guy from her team did not have time to do this and hit the monster's hand, dying instantly. Zhang Lan gritted her teeth and thought that the three supports were broken, there was about to be a simple hole in this place. Obviously this is a catastrophic level of danger. She attacked the monster and the girl thought that she was a genius since she managed to absorb the power of five crystals. At this time, the fighters who were below said that they were misinformed. 
This is not level yellow. He had never seen anything like it before. The man told everyone to get ready, no one should relax. Let them not let the portal suck them in. Zhang Lan shouted that it wouldn't work. They won't be able to cope with it that easily. The man asked in horror what does this mean. She replied that it was simply impossible. It's like it will never end. It's just an illusion and they need to find the center. At this time, Zhang Yuan was looking at the phone screen and a huge monster hand broke through the ceiling of the museum. Zhang Yuan quickly ran from under the sarcophagus and thought that this was the end, it was too late. The monster touched the sarcophagus and at the same moment Zhang Yuan was crushed. Now he was dead, not understanding what happened, lying under the sarcophagus, and in his hand was a phone from which he tried to call his sister. The sarcophagus began to glow and evaporate, and Zhang Yuan thought that it is so quiet here, has he really died? Suddenly he heard someone tell his sister to retreat. She can't handle this. In response she shouted that she would kill it. Why are they standing there? They need to kill it. She won't lose, she'll come home. The men ordered her to retreat. She must obey his orders. She said she just wants to kill it, kill it and kill it some more. She doesn't care whether it's an illusion or not. Zhang Yun suddenly jumped up from his place in an unknown space and called out to his sister. This is really her voice. But this is impossible. She studies in a private high school. She is one of the best in the class. She is gentle, well-mannered and a little clingy. How could she be in the thick of things? He tried to get out of this unknown space and said that he probably just imagined it. Why doesn't he see anything? He needs to take at least one look. His sister is there, he can't just die. Unknown space fulfilled his request and showed what was happening to his sister at that moment. Zhang Yun quickly pulled back in surprise and saw his sister raising her sword over the monster, wishing for its death. She attacked the monster and Zhang Yun was very surprised by this. As he watched her, she continued to fight the monster and a huge hand rushed straight towards her. She blocked the blow in time and thought that it had begun to materialize. But there is no turning back. Suddenly her protective barrier cracked and the man said that it had materialized. They don't have three minutes anymore, first they need to protect Zhang Lan. The other man told him not to worry, nothing would happen to her. Zhang Yun watched her fight and shouted at her to stop immediately. She needs to stop attacking, she's going to die like that. At the same moment, the monster broke through her protective shield and blood sprayed out of her body, and after that she fell to the ground at high speed. Tears flowed from Zhang Yuan's eyes and he shouted, can't she hear him? No need to stop, she will die. She can't die. From the realization that he could do nothing to help her, he fell to his knees and thought, is that why she was so rarely at home, hiding behind walks, is it really all for this? If he had known about this earlier, if she had told him, he should have protected her better. He knew that she was a good student, so he was rarely interested in what was happening at her school. He asks her for forgiveness, but he knows that this is not enough. He touched her cheek and told her to listen to him, let her stop, her brother will save her. But she did not feel the touch and heard only his voice. She looked at the sky and thought about her brother. She apologized to him and said that she couldn't give up this time. If she retreats, the entire city will turn to dust. She stood up and looked at the other fighters fighting. She thought that besides, this is their home. If she retreats, who will defend this place? Who will protect her brother? She must hold on a little longer. With this thought, she attacked the monster and thought that she must protect her brother in their home. Her brother must live. She went to meet the monster and Zhang Yuan shouted to her to run, she shouldn't get closer. At the same moment he suddenly opened his eyes and smelled the medicine. Did he end up in the hospital? Is he still alive? He noticed that the medical device was not reading his heartbeat and blood pressure. He said that this device was clearly broken. Outside the door he heard someone's voice asking Zhang Lan, she doesn't want her brother to be a vegetable until he dies. Let her listen to his words. Hearing this, Zhang Yun suddenly stood up from his bed and realized that his sister was outside the door. Before he had time to fully wake up, he stumbled and rushed to the door and thought, was she really alive? He is so happy. This time he will definitely protect her. He opened the door and was surprised to see his sister. She called out to him with tears in her eyes and asked if he had woken up yet. At the same moment she rushed into his arms and said that her brother had woken up. She was so worried about him. She hugged him tightly and he, stroking her head, said that he was fine. He thought it was strange, why did she look small? She looks like a junior high school student. She told him not to lie to her, he was hit by a car, how could he be okay? Zhang Yun thought in surprise, a car. He looked at the sign next to his room and saw the date July 19, 2042. He thought it was four years ago. He returned from the car accident he was in four years ago. He stroked his sister's cheek and thought that now he can take care of her. Now everything will be fine. A man standing next to him asked, did he wake up? The doctor said that the probability of brain death is very high, and now he miraculously woke up and also looks quite fresh. His name is Lin Dongliang, he is the commander of the Nighthawks, he has the rank of major. Zhang Yuan did not pay attention to him and entered the ward with his sister, loudly slamming the door behind him, while Lin Dongliang remained awkwardly standing outside. 
Zhang Yuan told his sister that she should not behave like this. She said that Uncle Lin is a good person, he was there at the time of the accident and tried to help him in every possible way. Zhang Yuan remembered how Lin Dongling commanded the squad during the disaster and thought that he remembered his face. He never would have thought that his team had their eye on his sister four years ago. He told her that free cheese only comes in a mousetrap. Why did he suddenly decide to help them? She replied that he said that she had talent and he hoped that she would come to study with him so that she could contribute to society. Zhang Yuan thought that this strange man seemed to have not had time to tell her about everything in more detail. She probably shouldn't get involved in all this until college. She said his hands were so cold, should she call a doctor? He wondered if it was possible to escape from danger without a fight. Because when a threat arises, she simply will not be able to take care of herself. This is even scarier. The best way to protect yourself is to fight. He went to the door and asked his sister if she could help him with the discharge. He will go to thank Mr. Lin. At this time, Lin Donglang was standing outside and eavesdropping on them. His sister agreed and said that she was almost done with everything. When Zhang Yuan opened the door, Lin Donglang said that there was no need for gratitude. He laughed awkwardly and said that he would like to talk to him. Seeing him, Zhang Yuan thought, he didn't eavesdrop on their conversation, did he? After a while, he dressed in his usual clothes and told Lin Donglang that he knew that he wanted to lure his sister into his team. If he is not mistaken, then the academy to which he invites her is the ideal place for this. Lin Dongling asked in surprise, how did he know about this? Zhang Yuan replied that he knows a lot of things, such as about portals and the existence of monsters, and that his sister is a genius. And they, hypocrites, hiding behind a desire to benefit society, are trying to kidnap a little girl and ruin her life. Lin Dongling exclaimed that let him not try to make him out to be some kind of villain. They are looking for talents that will save humanity. Zhang Yuan said that he is an adult, is he eavesdropping for the sake of humanity? He hopes he will stay away from them. Lin Dongling said that since he knows everything about it, he won't beat around the bush. His sister's talent can really save humanity. He hopes he will explain everything to her and allow her. Zhang Yuan interrupted him and said that he would allow her to enter the academy and become a warrior. Lin Dongling asked in surprise, is he serious? Didn't he just tell you not to stay away from them? Zhang Yuan asked, are these two things contradictory? He has his own conditions, if he does not agree with them, he will not allow her to enter the academy. Lin Dongling asked how much money he wants for the permit. He will give him everything. Zhang Yuan replied that it's not that simple, he doesn't need money. He wants to accompany her to the academy. No matter what she will study and what tasks she will perform, he wants to be there. This is his only condition, let him think about it carefully. His sister obeys only him, he assures him, Without his consent he will not see her at the academy. Zhang Yuan approached his sister and Lin Dongliang. Looking at them, he thought that there would be no problems with admission, but how could he enroll an ordinary person in the warrior class? But without his consent, he will miss out on Zhang Lian's talent. After Zhang Yuan left the hospital, his sister asked if he was okay. It seems to her that his body is somehow weak and cold. He replied that because of this stupid treatment, his arms were all bruised from injections. He wants to cook something delicious at home and eat with her. She was delighted and said that she wanted pork ribs and sweet and sour sauce and pork legs. As she happily walked forward, Zhang Yuan stopped and looked at the bruise on his arm. He thought it didn't look like a bruise, it looked more like a cadaverous stain. After some time, there were a lot of delicious dishes on their table. Zhang Lan ate the cooked food and said that her brother cooked so deliciously. Zhang Yuan put his chopsticks on the table and she asked, is he full yet? After the hospital, he completely lost his appetite. He's so pale, maybe they should go back to the hospital. He replied that a decrease in appetite after a coma is normal, everything will be fine. He started washing the dishes and thought that he didn't really want to eat at all. Wiping the plates with a towel, he thought that he had not felt hungry, thirsty or tired for several days, he didn't even need to sleep or take a shower. The worst thing is that there really is a corpse stain on his body. At first he thought that there was a problem with the equipment at the hospital, but at home he became convinced that he had no blood pressure or heartbeat, he also couldn't measure his body temperature, and cadaverous spots appeared on his body. All signs point to him actually being dead. The only reasonable explanation is the magic that brought him back four years into the past. But nevertheless it remains completely unclear how this happened. This world is full of secrets, he is sure that he can find the answers at the academy. Fortunately, cadaveric spots do not appear too quickly. This will not be discovered until he, for example, goes to the hospital. He's sure this will scare Lan Lan. Suddenly the phone rang in his pocket and he answered the call. Lin Dongling's voice came from the phone, he said that it was about what he said last time. After the end of the holidays, let him come with his sister to the academy. Zhang Yuan replied that it was that simple. Lin Dongling exclaimed irritably that this is not at all easy. He really needs his sister. He will make it clear in advance that he will not receive special treatment, he will not be allowed to skip classes, and he will be expelled if he scores less than 90 points in any subject. 
Zhang Yun replied that there would be no problem with that. After the end of the holidays they came to the academy and Zhang Lan said that this academy is so majestic. She pointed to the statue and asked, Who is it? Shouldn't there be a statue of Confucius in front of the school? He replied that he is the creator of the system of perfection of inability, he is recognized as the strongest man of this world. Some man was watching them from behind and looking at a photo of Zhang Lan on the tablet. After confirming that it was her, he walked up to them and said that his name was Zai Yihan. He was in charge of admission to special classes, and he was their mentor. They are their new students Zhang Lan and Zhang Yuan, now they are in the same class with them. He threw a bag at Zhang Yuan, and carefully brought it to his sister and said that these were school supplies. There is a watch here, let her put it on now, he will take her to the dorm and tell her what's what. Their academy has a very well-developed infrastructure, there is a sports ground and even an art gallery, they will be able to go there someday. Zhang Yuan didn't like that he was ignoring him, he squeezed his shoulder and moved him away from his sister and said that they could handle the rest themselves. They went further and Zhang Lan asked her brother, how does he like it? Let him try on his watch too. Zai Yihan looked after them irritably and tutted displeasedly. After a while, they looked at their watches and a voice emanating from it greeted the freshmen of 2042. Military training will begin at 1 o'clock in the afternoon, so they need to quickly finish registration at the academy and gather in front of the sports ground. Zai Yihan heard this alert and thought, what other military training? He wonders what makes this special class different. After a while, they came to the sports ground and one of the freshmen threw his watch on the ground and said that it was an idiotic watch. He'll see if it squeals when he breaks it. One of them began to cry and said that he was shaking all over, he was going to have a nervous breakdown. Zhang Lan looked at them stomping on their watches in irritation and said that she understood them. This vibration sound is really annoying. Zhang Yuan thought that it seems that except for theirs, all the other watches are broken. Zhang Lan asked why his watch stopped chirping. He replied that he said that he received the message and it stopped. What about her? She folded her hands in prayer and tearfully said that if this watch buzzed again, she would not be able to stand it. She asked it to stop. She proudly said that the watch really stopped after her plea. Zhang Yuan thought that the watch recognized keywords, but he couldn't think that someone actually controlled them. Suddenly someone's voice told them all to gather. All the freshmen lined up and the man who stood next to Zhang Yuan said that those stupid watches had finally stopped ringing. Zhang Yuan looked at him and thought, he is at least 40, right? It seems that in special classes, potential is more important than age. A girl came to the center of the site and told them all to shut up. She is the freshman tutor, Liu Wen. They can contact her on any issue, but only after they pass the military training test. Freshman Zhang Lan was released due to her young age. The rest need to go to the military training site after signing the documents. After they were given the documents, the man exclaimed, Why the hell are they making them sign this? What does it mean military training is dangerous and the academy is not responsible for accidents? This is just military training, are they going to torture them? Liu Wen said that if he is not going to sign, he can go to the dean's office and drop out. However, she wants to remind everyone that military training will give them a great opportunity, they will gain valuable experience, become much stronger and will be able to absorb crystals more successfully. Hearing this, the man began to sign documents and Zhang Yuan thought, even at the cost of his own life. Apparently crystals are needed to improve a warrior's abilities, but the absorption rate of most is too low. He signed the documents and thought that he was already dead, it didn't cost him anything to sign this. It's good that his sister was released. Will he be able to absorb the crystal if he gets it? The guy who came with the curator looked at Zhang Yuan and thought that he was tall, thin, but quite handsome. He is the only one who signed the documents without hesitation. And he is the only one who replied that he received the message. The freshmen began to sit in military vehicles. Someone said that all 40 students sat in their cars. They are getting ready to depart. The guy walked up to the car where Zhang Yuan was sitting and called out to him. He asked what is it. The guy pulled him towards him by the hand and said that if he felt in danger, he should hide in a safe place and call for help through the clock. He needs to make sure his watch isn't stolen. This is his reward for correctly responding to the alert. Zhang Yuan grabbed his hand and asked, then why did Lan Lan's watch also turn off? The guy asked, is he talking about that girl? He just likes her voice. How could he refuse her? By the way, what does she look like? Judging by her voice, she is such a beauty. The car started to drive away and Zhang Yuan shouted that he was a disgusting idiot. He will kill him. The guy grinned and said that he was so grateful to him that he couldn't take his eyes off him. Those who know how to be grateful have a future. After a while, on Mount Shemin, all the students lined up in a row and Liu Wen said that they all have the potential to become energy absorbers of the ruins, but until they absorb the crystal, they are ordinary people. 
This preparation will remind them of how fragile human life is. Now she will tell them a little about this place. Let them imagine that this is all a border with several supporting energy points. It's like copying a space based on the original area. As long as they are in this space and everything that happens here will not affect the outside world. The government is using this technology to grow crystals artificially. Shaman Mountain is one of the growing areas. Their task is to survive for three days. The backpacks in front of them have supplies they can use. The students started putting on their backpacks and one of them asked, should they come here as an ordinary person? Is that what she just said? Liu Wen said that they don't have to sneak in, they can hunt or gather. And the main task is to survive, to reveal your potential. Zhang Yun thought, is there a chance to get the crystal? If he gets the power of it, then he can protect Lan Lan. Liu Wen said that if they ever find themselves in danger, they should use the watch to call for help. The watch not only tracks their location, but also emits high-frequency high-frequency sound waves that can scare away some low-level alien races. But let them keep in mind, this function eats up energy. The charge in their watch is exactly three days. She opened a portal and told them to come in if they were ready. They went ahead and she said that finally she would like to remind them all that they, the people of China, in difficult times should help each other, and not fight among themselves. If they become aware that they have harmed any of their fellow students, they will be immediately expelled and court-martialed. Zhang Yun thought that the last words sounded quite scary. Well, he'll look at these aliens. Liu Wen said that fighting as a team is much safer. She reminds us that the team should consist of no more than six people. The formation of teams began and Zhang Yun approached a group of people and asked if he could join them. The guy waved his hand and apologized to him, but they don't have room, so let him look for someone else. Some girl called out to him and asked if he still hadn't found the team. There are only four of them, why shouldn't he? Suddenly a guy from her team called her name Wang Ziyuan and interrupted her and said that it was time for them to go. He looked at Zhang Yuan and said that they have no room. Zhang Yuan thought, do they have no space? There are only four of them, but he had no intention of asking them. Wang Ziyuan apologized to him and ran to her team. After a while, Zhang Yun set off alone and, walking through the forest, noticed that someone was watching him. A man looked out from behind the bushes and Zhang Yun thought that, of course, the most terrible creature on the planet is a man. He decided to sharply turn off the path and the man was surprised by this. His friend approached him from behind and called him Wang Men and said that this guy had turned off the path. Did he notice them? After a while, Zhang Yun looked at the map and thought that the species raised here is called Snow Snake. The snake takes into account the temperature when choosing a place to hunt, and its attack power is average. The quality of the crystal is very high, as many as four skills. This snake has a super sense of smell, random boost, physical ability. It can freeze everything within a certain radius, duration 10 seconds. The snake can also slowly recover from physical damage and instantly recover in a critical situation. Zhang Yun thought that this snake had thin skin and a lot of meat, it was as if it was raised like pigs for slaughter. The latter ability is interesting, but he doesn't want the snake to use it while fighting him. In any case, he needs to find it first. He stepped on the ice and looked at his feet in surprise, he looked around and saw that everything around was covered in ice, and snakes were climbing the trees. He took out his blade and the snakes noticed him. Several snakes collided with each other and one of them fell from a tree right in front of Zhang Yuan. The snake looked at him, but did not do anything and Zhang Yuan raised his blade over it. But he stopped and thought, is it not attacking him? Wild animals are never obedient, right? Suddenly he remembered that a snake hunts when it feels warm. So now for it he is no different from a tree, because he is dead. And the dead have a low body temperature. He easily cut off the snake's head and thought, is it dead? He saw that the snake's body was connected by a crystal and thought that it had activated its skill and was being reborn. If it doesn't die with one hit, he'll try again. After he killed the snake, a crystal fell out from it. He picked it up and thought that the instructor shouldn't know about his dead state until he absorbed the crystal. His sister is a genius, but his skill is probably not that bad. He decided to check it out and a system window appeared in front of him, which said that he had found a snow snake crystal, did he want to absorb it? The crystal has the following characteristics, super perception, ice, regeneration. All these characteristics are at the yellow first level and he can improve this. The last characteristic is immunity to death at a catastrophic level, which cannot be improved. Zhang Yun thought, is this a text clue? Well, he'll try, he still won't die. He absorbed the crystal and sparks began to emanate from his body. He looked at his hand and felt that all four abilities had been successfully absorbed, was he really lucky? At this time, a group of Huang Ziyuan was standing near the wooden house. Their leader said that even the strongest person in China could only achieve a 0.03% success rate in absorbing the crystal. Huang Ziyuan said that this probability is comparable to getting an SSR rank. The guy said that with such a probability it is almost impossible to succeed. The leader told them to forget about it. He suggests following the original plan, 
They will find a couple of crystals and return with them to the instructor. At this time, Wang Men was watching them and his friend said that they broke their watch and the only one suitable for use was these guys. What will they do? Wang Men grinned and said that whatever they were able to take away would be theirs. His group followed him and one of them asked, then they will just ask the watch from the bespectacled guy they were following. At this time, the guy with glasses looked at the laptop screen and said that he even hinted that the watch should be used and he dares to call himself a warrior. He looked at the map of all the disciples' locations and thought, how did he dare to climb the mountains without the necessary equipment? Li Wen asked, are they already fighting among themselves? He replied that not yet. She asked if they could go ahead and help them. He thought about it and leaned back in his chair and said that the death of a couple of idiots would greatly puzzle the court. Let them try to stand up for themselves. During this time, Zhang Yuan experimented with his new power and froze a tree leaf. He thought this was good, he could freeze things for 10 seconds, at a critical moment this could help him a lot. He looked at the world with a completely different look and thought, is this a snake's special heat perception skill? He can sense everything within a 10 meter radius. With these abilities, immunity to death no longer seemed so attractive to him, freezing and super perception are much better than simple regeneration. Although his body temperature had not recovered, the cadaveric spots had disappeared, and in addition, the need for glasses had disappeared. He kicked the tree and thought that he was sure, with all these abilities, he could handle a couple of snakes. A snake fell from a tree and he thought that he would just deal with those snakes that fall from trees to check something. He attacked the snake and thought, did he get it right? He can stop regeneration if he cuts off the snake's head. The system reported that a snow snake crystal was found, does it want to absorb it? He absorbed three crystals and his characteristics increased. He realized what was happening, he could pump himself up with the help of similar crystals. One crystal guarantees one promotion. He doesn't know what will happen after the yellow level. Simply put, he'll just kill a couple more and check everything himself. He walked further through the forest, and at this time Wang Men led the group. One of them said that they were moving further and further from the main road, maybe they. Wang Men interrupted him and said that if that weakling came here alone, then they have nothing to fear. The other guy said he was more worried that they wouldn't be able to find him. Suddenly one of them stopped and pointed his finger at the dead snake and said that there was a corpse of an animal here. They looked at it and the guy asked in surprise, did he kill the snow snake himself? Wang Men said that he must have used a watch. How can an ordinary person be so strong? The guy pointed his finger at the other animal corpses and said that there were three more dead snakes. Wang Men was surprised and asked if it was possible that he had already absorbed the crystal. He could have absorbed it or came here prepared in the first place, right? A guy from his group called out and asked if they could leave this idea to them. He interrupted him and said that they could not retreat. After so many killings, he has probably become much stronger, eliminating him is the best option. At this time, Zhang Yuan was still throwing snakes from the trees and felt that someone was coming here. He uses his special perception and saw that he was surrounded by five people. Are these the guys who were following him then? Wang Men came up behind him and told him to give up or he would die. The Wang Men group began to narrow their circle around Zhang Yuan and he turned around abruptly and thought that from the looks of it, they were going to rob him. He shrugged and said he didn't have any crystals. Wang Men exclaimed, who is he lying to? He pointed his finger at the snakes and told him to look at how many snake corpses there are. How can he not have crystals? Zhang Yuan replied that it was exactly like that. He thought that the snakes were actually alive, they were just stunned, but these freaks decided to rob him. He wouldn't allow them to treat his sister the same way in the future. He needs to teach them a lesson. He poured out the entire contents of his backpack on the ground and said that he really didn't have any crystals they could see for themselves. Wang Men said that they saw four dead snakes along the way, where did he hide the crystals? Zhang Yuan replied that he received four crystals, but was unable to absorb them and they disappeared. Wang Men asked, did he, an idiot, try to absorb the crystals without the help of an instructor? If everything was that simple, then every fool would be able to get into a special class. Zhang Yuan thought that he should try to keep his body in good order. Wang Men looked at the snakes and thought that it looked like this idiot had no intention of fighting. He will drive him away and take the crystals from these snakes for himself. He told him to leave his watch and get out of here. He agreed and threw the watch on the ground asking, can he go now? The guy from the group told him that he should give the knife to them too. Another guy from the group did not agree with them and said that they had already taken everything from him. Maybe they would at least leave him a knife. Wang Men interrupted him and told them to take the knife away. Suddenly he decides to attack them with it. Zhang Yuan frowned and said that he is the only one here who is thirsting for other people's blood. Does he really think that he will attack them? The guy walked up to him and told him to calm down, just go back to the safe zone and he'll be fine. Wang Men said that it was true, they didn't encounter anything dangerous on the way here. There is food and water in the safe zone, he will complete the task if he stays there for all three days. Zhang Yuan started to leave and said that he had better not follow him. He deliberately stepped on the snake and it woke up. Following it, 
The other snakes woke up and headed towards the Wang Men group. The guy said that is expected from their leader, how cleverly he pulled it off. Another guy asked, won't he come back for them when he realizes there's no food there? Wang Men picked up Zhang Yuan's watch and asked what he would do to them without a weapon. He saw that his watch was 95% charged and asked in horror, did he not use the watch? So are all these snakes alive? They turned around at once and saw that a bunch of snakes had surrounded them. Wang Men rushed to run and told the others to run, these snakes are still alive. After that, screams began to be heard in the forest, and from these loud screams the birds began to fly away. At this time, Zhang Yuan was walking along the path and hearing their screams, he thought that they shouldn't have taken his things. After a while, a guy and Wang Xiaoyan appeared on the path. He told her that they were almost there, another ten minutes and they would stumble upon a snake's nest. She asked if they weren't in danger. They saw Zhang Yuan coming towards them and stopped. Wang Xiaoyan ran up to him and asked how did he end up here. He replied that he had just been robbed. She was surprised and asked if he was injured. He replied that he was fine, after they robbed him, they went to kill monsters. He turned around and said they were probably done by now, I guess. The guy grabbed Huang Xiaoyan's hand and walked past Zhang Yuan and said that they needed to hurry up before they killed everyone. Huang Xiaoyan asked him to wait and said that they couldn't just leave him here. The guy gritted his teeth irritably and put on a smile, greeted Zhang Yuan and said that they were their team. Zhang Yuan interrupted him and told him not to bother, he knows that he doesn't want him to join them. He thought that if he did not eat and drink, it would certainly arouse suspicion, so he had to be careful not to make a mistake. But it's not very convenient for him to kill monsters without a knife. He said that he would go with them, take his backpack and leave. After a while, they reached the snake's nest and the last survivor rushed towards them screaming for help. Several snakes bit him and he fell dead. The leader of the group was surprised and asked why there are only snakes here. Wang Xiaoyan looked at this in horror and said that they were all dead. Having finished with the Wang Men group, the snakes headed towards them and the guy with Huang Xiaoyan began to run. He grabbed her hand and asked why she froze. They need to escape. She turned to Zhang Yuan and he told her to forget about him. Zhang Yuan picked up the knife and turned around and asked, were they really so scared by a bunch of snakes? He went to the snakes and said that he thought no one would mind if he killed them. With deft movements, he cut off the heads of the snakes and after a while killed them all. He collected a bunch of crystals and decided to absorb them. Immediately after this, his super perception increased to the second green level, his ice increased to the third green level, and his regeneration increased to the yellow third level. Feeling an improvement in his characteristics, he opened his eyes and thought that ten crystals were needed to improve yellow to green level. Apparently, further improvement will take place according to the same principle. The likelihood of leveling up a skill with one crystal has been confirmed. He pumped up freezing to the green third level, but regeneration remained at yellow. Apparently, some force prevents him from improving this. Surely others think that the crystals cannot be absorbed by an ordinary person. After an unsuccessful absorption, the crystals of ordinary people simply evaporate. He wonders if everyone can see the same system prompts as he does. He used freezing on corpses and thought that he should not give away the number of crystals he had absorbed. But what about the dead students? At this time, in the observation room, Li Wen said that nothing new happened. In such situations, an instructor is usually called using a watch and all the trouble falls on his shoulders. Suddenly they received a signal for help and she said that one of the guys was asking them to help, would they do it? The guy adjusted his headphones and said that they were not in any danger. They don't know about the monitoring, so he suggests she put on a little show. After a while, he went to a call for help and asked the leader of the Huang Xiaoyan team, is this the scene of a murder? He confirmed his words and, having examined the corpses, he thought that most of the wounds were snake bites, but there was one knife wound. Three watches are broken, some of them have low batteries. Judging by the crime scene, this is most likely what happened. He imagined how it all happened. The guy from the Wang Men group said that the sound wave could scare them away, but not kill them. What should they do? Wang Men told them to turn on the clock, but one of them didn't listen and ran away saying that they didn't want to die. Wang Men ran behind him and told him to wait for him. Having dealt with the rest of the group, the snakes rushed after them and the guy asked why these snakes are so fast. Wang Men said that it doesn't matter if he runs slower than a snake. The next moment he stabbed him and said that the main thing is that he runs faster. After inspecting the scene of death, the guy thought that Zhang Yuan led them directly to the snake nest and indirectly killed them with the help of these same snakes. If he looks around, he will notice at least 30 snakes here. So why didn't they attack Zhang Yuan himself? He looked at the snakes and said that was interesting, he didn't notice him using anything. The leader of the group asked what he was talking about. The guy replied that it was okay, he found out what was wrong. Military training continues. He looked at the corpses and thought that this Zhang Yuan has enough cunning, courage and cold calculation. He likes him. 
If he returns alive, he will settle this matter for him. At this time, in the academy canteen, Zhang Lan and Lin Donglang were sitting at the same table and he asked how was her first day at the academy. She replied that the campus is beautiful, the dorm is huge, the teacher is kind, the food in the cafeteria is very tasty, everything is great. He gave her a phone and said that this phone has a satellite communication function. She will be able to keep in touch using it, no matter where she is. She turned away and said that her brother told her not to take anything from the hands of strangers. He was surprised and thought that he was right. He said it was not a gift. Let her consider it as a loan, earn money and buy a new one, and she will return this one to him. After these words, she took the phone and said that then she would not be modest. He asked where her brother was. She replied that he was at military training. Lin Dongling mentally cursed and thought, did they send an ordinary person to military training? What are they thinking at this academy? If something happens to him, Lan Lan will hate him to death. He got up from the table and told her to eat, and he needed to make one call. She asked, is military training dangerous? Is there any way he can bring her brother back quickly? He nervously wiped the sweat from his face and said that it wasn't dangerous there at all. He'll be back soon. He thought he hoped he was okay. At this time, Liu Wen was sitting at a table with a man and he asked, did that guy in black glasses come with her? She asked him not to call him that. He came to observe the military training and not to show off his face, so she stopped short and noticed that a guy had approached them and asked what was wrong. He greeted them and said that his name was Feng Yumo, he was from the Fingguan team. He is here to complete a mission. He asked, is the commander here? Liu Wen was surprised by his presence and thought, isn't this the guy that is ranked 68th on the list? Since he was here for a mission, why wasn't she notified about the postponement of the military exercise? She gave her name and said that she was an instructor at the academy in charge of military training. Feng Yumo said that his mission is to rescue student Zhang Yuan, they don't know where he is. She said that the equipment was being tracked, according to the latest information. He headed to the safe zone and still has not returned. He thanked them and left. Li Wen returned to the conversation with the man and said that military training was going well, what could suddenly happen? He said he didn't know about it, but he had heard something about this young man. She asked what? He replied that he found out that his brother was sick, only the snow snake crystal could cure him, he applied for a transfer here. In addition, he has a small problem, he has a severe form of face blindness. At this time, Feng Yuma was running through the forest and looking at the map. He thought that as long as the exercise was observed, nothing bad should happen. If he follows this road, he will come straight to the snake's nest. If he catches a few snakes then, he stopped short when he saw the dismembered corpse of a snake and thought, what freshman wields a knife like that? In a clearing in the forest, he saw Zhang Yuan raise his knife over the snake's meat. He noticed that his knife had already been through a lot and thought, the academy knife is an excellent weapon, and he handles it like this. He came up behind him and said if his knife could show emotions, he would cry. That's not how you use a knife. Zhang Yuan turned around and asked, who is he anyway? What is he doing here? Is he a sophomore? What does it matter to him how he works with a knife? Does he want to offer him another way? Feng Yumo was surprised by the influx of questions and Zhang Yuan asked, is he going to teach him something? Feng Yumo thought, what's wrong with him? Wouldn't someone else be ashamed and leave in such a situation? Zhang Yuan said that the academy only gave him this knife, does he want to give him something else? Feng Yumo gave him a knife and told him he could go. Zhang Yuan wanted to ask something about the snake, but he interrupted him and said that he could take it for himself, but the rest of the snakes were his. Zhang Yuan asked, isn't he ashamed to take booty from a person who has just started military training? Feng Yumo reached for his weapon and said that this was not his territory, and the rule first come, first grind does not work here. As for who gets the snakes, then. With these words, he rushed to the attack and broke the snake's skull with his spear. He said that of course the snakes will go to whoever is stronger. Zhang Yuan was surprised and thought that he killed the snake with one blow, he is definitely a professional. This weapon is similar to the one Lan Lan used in her previous life. Is this official gear? Feng Yumo said that this is the difference in their strength. Zhang Yuan started using freezing and thought that an experienced warrior had come here to fight monsters side by side with novice students. Something is clearly wrong here. He put him in ice and started beating him with his fists. He stepped back and thought, why is ice so dense? Now his bones will turn to dust and he's not even hit. He doesn't look like a villain, so he'll leave it for now. Let him sit while he kindly uses this knife. He took his weapon and said that he could use his weapon, but he should definitely return it to him later. He left, and Feng Yumo remained frozen in ice. After a while, Feng Yumo finally got out of the ice and walked to the safe zone on trembling legs. The guy with glasses saw him and asked, is his name Feng Yumo? He laughed and asked if someone beat him up. The wounds are small, but the humiliation is colossal. Was his weapon also stolen? Feng Yumo approached him and said that he should heal him. The guy reached out to him and used the ability to return to the sun, 
with the help of which the target returns to the state in which it was 24 hours ago. They sat down at a table and the guy told him to tell about his misfortunes, let it please his soul. After a while he told him everything and the guy asked, so he says that one of the students stole his weapon. He is sure. Fang Yumo confirmed his words and said that he could not detect the signal from his watch. The guy replied that currently the only disciple who wears a watch is Zhang Yuan, but his watch was taken by Wang Men. Did he really just not see the person he was fighting with? He put his hand on his shoulder and said that he thought now he should just focus on the original task. Feng Yumo replied that everything is fine, so he can track Zhang Yuan's whereabouts. The guy confirmed the words and asked, but isn't his goal the snow snake crystals? At this time, Wang Men was walking through the forest. He wiped the sweat from his face and said that in all two days he had not met a single living snake, and he also got lost. Is he really cursed? He walked further along the path and saw on the sign that there was no passage, since the road was being repaired ahead. He exclaimed, why is there renovation everywhere? He walked further along the path and said that then he would look for another road. At this time, Feng Yuma was watching him and changing the signs all this time. He looked after him and said that in order for him to get more crystals, he would have to wander around the forest more. He looked at the two crystals and said that in any case, beginners like them don't even need crystals anyway. At this time, Zhang Yuan was looking at the map of the forest. He came across the corpses of snakes and asked what kind of soulless person killed all the snakes in the area. He climbed a tree to look around and, seeing a mountain, said that this mountain was not on the map that was issued at the academy. He should try his luck there. On the way to the mountain he came across a couple of snakes. He looked at the collected crystals and thought that having climbed so far, he still found several snakes. After absorbing the crystals, the system reported that super perception increased to the blue fourth level, freezing increased to the blue sixth level, and regeneration increased to the yellow fourth level. Zhang Yuan thought that the perception range had been increased to one kilometer. The freezing time is increased to two minutes, with enough energy he can use this multiple times, so the time can increase to several hours. He walked through the forest and said that due to the lack of hunger, thirst and fatigue, he was a little lost in time. Maybe it's time for him to return. Suddenly a snake slithered near his feet and used freezing. The snake stuck out its tongue and looked at Zhang Yuan. He felt its gaze and quickly pulled back and asked why it was hiding here. At that very moment the snake attacked him and he said that it was so fast. He ducked down to avoid the blow, but the kite still hit him and inflicted a wound. He used regeneration on his wound and thought that he definitely couldn't cope with this snake, he didn't know if his new freeze would work on it. The snake attacked him and he extended his hand forward and used freezing on the snake. The snake's head was covered with ice and Zhang Yuan exclaimed in surprise that it worked. He needs to try this again. He froze the snake from all sides and struck with his weapon. He noticed that the ice had cracked and began to strike it many times. He dealt another blow to the snake's head and thought that although the damage was low, he might succeed. This weapon is great. He pierced the snake's head and thought that after all the freezing that he had used, his strength was practically running out. He almost broke his head, so he is immune to death. Suddenly he stopped short and realized that the crystal was still intact. Immunity can work. At this time, students were gathering in the safe zone. Li Wen said that there was still half an hour before the end of the collection. All returning students must come to her to register. Wang Men reached the safe zone and, after catching his breath, said that he had finally made it out. Feng Yumo, who had been following him the whole time, said that he had successfully followed him from the mountain itself to make sure that he would reach the camp. A guy with glasses came up to him and asked if he was wrong again. The person he accompanied is not Zhang Yuan. Feng Yumo asked, weren't he the ones who gave him his coordinates? The guy replied that the coordinates belong to the Zhang Yuan watch, but as for why the Zhang Yuan watch is on another student, that's already a problem. He approached Wang Men and said that he would give him a chance to explain everything. At this time, Zhang Yuan cut the snake into pieces and struck it on the head several times, thinking that even though he is actually a corpse, he is very tired, but this creature is also working hard to recover. With the last blow, a crystal fell out of the snake and Zhang Yuan said that the snake was finally dead. The system reported that he found the snow snake crystal, does he want to absorb it? There is an additional skill, Ice Blood Blast. It can't be improved. With this skill, all abilities are increased by 120%, duration is 30 seconds. After use, weakness sets in for 48 minutes. Zhang Yuan caught his breath and thought, what kind of ability is this? It's good that the snake didn't have time to take advantage of this. Absorbing such power is definitely worth it. At this time, Wang Men cried and asked them to let him die here, but just don't let them put him on trial. While Wang Men was being taken into custody, Feng Yumo approached the guy with glasses and asked if he did this on purpose. He replied that he simply provided the necessary information. Feng Yumo said that he deliberately gave him the wrong coordinates. The guy asked, is this important? The only thing that matters is that Zhang Yuan still hasn't shown up, he must have a weapon. He called out to Liu Wen and told her to take the students to the academy while he waited for Zhang Yuan. 
Then they will return in Mr. Fang Yumo's car. Fang Yumo looked at the time and said, It's already 10 o'clock, time to get ready, will he just let them go back? The guy asked what is it? He wants to arrange a showdown in front of the instructor. Fang Yumo remained silent and the guy said that he likes this guy, so don't let him go too far in trying to take revenge on him. Fang Yumo said that thanks to his ability he is alive, so he will not kill him. The guy said that the main thing for him is not to train too much, otherwise he will get tired. Five minutes passed, Fang Yuma did 22 push-ups. When half the day had passed, he had done 300 push-ups. When 5 o'clock arrived, he had already done 952 barbell squats. The guy with glasses got angry and said that they had been waiting for 7 hours already. He didn't think they'd have to wait that long. What does he think about himself? Fang Yuma asked him to calm down and he told him not to calm him down, he would kill him himself. Fang Yumo said that nerve cells do not recover. While Zhang Yuan was coming out of the forest, the guy with glasses said that even if he died, he would kill him first. Zhang Yuan approached them and seeing that they were the only ones here, he asked in surprise, has no one come yet? Did he come too early? They looked at him and Fang Yumo noticed that his weapon was in terrible condition. He got angry and asked what he had done with his gun. Zhang Yuan showed the weapon and said that he did nothing of the kind. At the same moment, some force shackled his legs and he felt that he could not move. He saw that he was enveloped in dark clots and thought, is this a shadow? The furious Fang Yumo pounced on him and hit him with all his might. A guy with glasses came up to him and said that the un hit him too hard. Fang Yumo asked, wasn't he going to kill him himself? The guy replied that he should have just hit him lightly. What should they do if he really dies? He healed him and Zhang Yuan opened his eyes and thought that he was thrown 10 meters. It seems that this technique also has a range of actions. He pulled out a gun and thought that he should find a way to keep his distance from him, but what were these two whispering about? The guy pointed his finger at him and said that because of him the snakes bit his comrades, they have all the evidence. Fang Yumo scratched his head and suggested that he just tie it up. Zhang Yuan stood up and thought that one of them was poaching during the exercise, and the other did not say a word to him. They conspired and want to kill him. He took the pistol off the safety and fired two bullets at them. But nothing happened to them and Fang Yumo told him to give up, he couldn't break through his defense. Zhang Yuan said that they cannot defeat him. The guy asked, did he think they couldn't? He has no time to go. He thought, did he have some aces up his sleeve? He would love to see it. He put on a nasty smile and said that when he dies, his sister will go to him. Zhang Yuan's eyes opened wide and he became angry. Pieces of ice began to fly around him and he said that if they touched his sister, he would grind them into powder. Fang Yumo called the guy with glasses an idiot and asked if he said that on purpose. The system informed Zhang Yuan that his super perception ability has been improved. He has gained a new heat shock ability, catastrophic level, which he can improve upon. With this ability, he can extract the temperature from the air and release that heat within a 10,000 meter radius. Freezing skill improved. He received a new ability, ice coating, with which he can freeze all objects within a radius of 10,000 meters. His regeneration skill has been improved. He received a new ability, immortal summoning, with which he can be immune to any attacks and negative effects. He thought that he only had 30 seconds, but it didn't matter, he would make the most of this time. He extended his hand forward and huge pieces of ice rushed straight towards them. Fang Yumo was encased in ice again and the guy with the glasses used healing and thought that he had such a powerful power. If it weren't for Fang Yumo's protection, not a grain of them would be left. He used his return to the sun healing ability several times, but their bodies kept freezing and he thought that the ambient temperature was too low, everything was frozen in just a second. Zhang Yuan continued to blast freezing at them and thought that he needed a lot of energy for this skill. It lost almost all its power in one use. He must not hesitate. He pulled out a gun and told them to die. But the gun froze in his hands and he thought it was all over. Is the gun frozen too? His body began to freeze, he thought that it seemed like he had run out of luck. He fell to the ground exhausted and said that even if he died, he would not let them. The guy with the glasses thought, could he really increase the damage by as much as 448 with the help of a boost? Anything higher is a kryptonite ability. He just exceeded that power. He asked Fang Yumo to help him approach Zhang Yuan. He used the ability to return to the sun on him and said that he could not let him go so easily, so let him not dare to die. Having lost his strength, he fell to the ground and Fang Yumo cursed. He dragged them both away and told the guy with glasses named Feng King that he was an idiot. Why can't he not look for adventures on his ass? And he's an idiot for getting involved with him. After a while, in the hospital, the hospital equipment showed that Zhang Yuan had no pulse and Feng Yuma asked, is it really impossible to save him? The doctor replied that the temperature had dropped, the heartbeat and blood pressure had disappeared. That technique destroyed him. He said that he needed to be sent to the morgue, but Feng King burst into the ward and asked them to let him through. Feng Yumo turned around and asked who he was. Feng King exclaimed, can't he recognize him without his glasses? He brought the doctors out and told them to stop, he was simply in a state of suspended animation. 
Feng Yumo asked, is he sure about this? There are even corpse spots on it. Feng King asked where. He needs to take a look at it. He healed him and said everything was fine. He only has a couple of bruises, what is he talking about? Feng Yumo asked, is he sure? In response, Feng King asked if he could say for sure whether he was alive or dead. The next morning, Feng King looked at the list of young talents and saw that Feng Yumo had dropped to 69th place and his place was taken by a certain Chu Enming. Feng Yumo looked at his phone and asked, isn't this ridiculous? Feng King replied that he beat him twice. If his real name appears, then there will be many problems. Feng Yumo said that he himself would later tell him what idiotic option he chose. Zhang Yuan woke up and quietly said that it was so noisy here. He jumped out of bed and told them to shut up. Feng King told Feng Yumo to take a look, he said it was suspended animation, so let him throw money at him. Feng Yumo tutted irritably and transferred the money to him, and Zhang Yuan thought, what the hell is going on here? Since when are they so friendly? Suddenly he saw that a message from his sister had arrived on his phone. She asked if he was wounded and hospitalized. She is doing well, her teachers and classmates are taking care of her. Let him rest well, recover and not worry about her. Let him remember to call her when he wakes up. After reading the message, he thought, has it really been two days? They didn't send him to the morgue, but left him here. Feng King greeted Zhang Yuan and introduced himself as the student union president. What happened to him is his fault, so he asks for forgiveness. He extended his hand to him and said that they did not know each other, but on behalf of the student council he was inviting him to join them. Zhang Yuan asked, don't they know each other? At the same moment he hit him in the face and his glasses flew off his face. Feng King rubbed the place of the blow and Zhang Yuan, looking at his face, extended his hand to him and said that now they definitely know each other. At this time, his sister was sitting in the instructor's office and looking at the red crystal. Lin Dongling told her to calm down, it's okay if she makes a mistake. Let her simply take the crystal in her hands and try to feel the energy contained within. Li Wen told her to try. She thought that the probability of successfully absorbing a crystal was mere statistics. In fact, it all depended on a person's talent and his mental state. She began to worry and mentally told Zhang Lan that everything was fine. The crystal in her hand began to glow and she thought that this world is full of monsters, only warriors can defeat them. The reason Uncle Lin is so kind to her and her brother is because he counts on her. She wants to protect the world, protect her brother. The voice said that she had discovered a fire cloud. It will take 20 years of life to absorb, is she willing to absorb it? After a while she was reunited with her brother and said that he had returned. He scared her to death. She noticed his shape had changed and asked what happened to his shape. He replied that he had joined the student union and became a member of the disciplinary committee. This is the form of student union members. He thought that he had heard from Feng King that there would be a week's vacation after military training. He was probably assigned to this class for a reason. Lan Lan got here thanks to her talent and they definitely agreed on some conditions for him. He patted his sister on the head and asked if the instructor did anything special for her while he was away. She replied that it seemed like nothing, but Uncle Lin gave her a fire cloud crystal so she could absorb it. Zhang Yuan was surprised and she exclaimed that she is now the strongest warrior. Now she will protect him. Zhang Yuan thought that even in this life, she could not escape the fate of the team leader. All he can do is become stronger to protect her. She tugged at his hand and asked why he didn't ask what ability she got. He asked which one. She replied that now she has super speed and heavenly origins. Zhang Yuan looked at her confusedly and she walked up to the statue and told him to look here. She demolished the statue with one foot and asked how. Isn't she cool? He replied that, of course, she had become stronger, but this would not save her from responsibility for damaging public property. After that, they came to Liu Wen's office and Zhang Lan wrote an explanatory note. Liu Wen tiredly grabbed her head and said that everything was fine, just don't break anything else. Zhang Lan led her brother to the exit and said that she understood everything, so they will go. Zhang Yuan thought, they don't even need to pay. Isn't this too generous a gesture? Before they left, Liu Wen called out to Zhang Yuan and said that he had performed well in the military training. Does he want to try to absorb the crystal? She can help him. Zhang Yuan turned around and thought, didn't Feng King tell her anything? He thanked her for her kindness and said that he did not need her help. After they left, she sighed tiredly and thought that even though he was not interested in this, he did not need to make it so obvious. Suddenly she remembered that he was wearing a student council uniform and thought Feng King was going to find a successor at the training camp, could it really be him? After a while, Feng King gave Zhang Yuan a tour of the academy. He said that this building was reconstructed at his request. There is a training area downstairs, a living area upstairs, and furniture there as well. If he needs something, then just let him tell him. Zhang Yuan said that he needed a room for one, surely the student council president could do that. Feng King adjusted his glasses and said that he could just say it and he would do it. Feng Yumo told Zhang Yuan that he promised to teach him how to use weapons when they started. He replied that he would like to start right away. Feng King smiled and said that's great. 
He wants to look at it. Time passed, night came. They used many weapons and were tired and fell to the floor. Fang Yumo, breathing heavily, said that he couldn't do this anymore, he needed to take a break. Fang King said that he needed to heal, and quickly. Fang Yumo said that he still had some strength left. Fang King replied that this is not true, not at all. Zhang Yuan looked at his hands and said that he felt like he felt someone touch him. Fang Yumo said that it was 3 a.m., they had better eat and go back to training. Fang King said that there is a snack bar on the second floor, but his legs do not obey him. Zhang Yuan started to go upstairs and Fang King asked why this guy doesn't feel tired at all. Fang Yumo said that he was so tired, and this idiot doesn't even have talent for edged weapons. Usually warriors who enter the academy have good fighting skills, they grasp everything in 10 minutes, but this guy couldn't handle swords, pistols, or anything. A few minutes later, Zhang Yuan returned to them with soda and threw it to them. Fang King caught a can of soda and drank it. He sighed and said that he was alive again. Zhang Yuan walked up to Fang Yumo and said that they could continue then. Fang Yumo exclaimed, just a three-minute break after a 10-hour workout. Feng King sat down on the floor again and said that he was only half alive, he needed another jar. Zhang Yuan crushed the soda can and said that then they would rest a little more. He threw the crumpled can into the trash and Feng King was surprised, did he hit the bucket from 10 meters? Feng Yumo thought, maybe this is his hidden talent. He approached him and told him to quickly throw it again, but this time too at once. He gave him two jars and Zhang Yuan threw it, hitting the bucket again. Feng Yumo was delighted and said that the best option for him was a hidden weapon. Zhang Yuan asked, is it as beautiful as a sword? Feng Yumo said thoughtfully that maybe it would make sense for him to use the plain badger crystal. He is fearless, good in battle, and has an excellent sense of smell, a blow of rage will help him level up his abilities faster, and there will be no need for weapons. He once encountered one during surgery. After activating the abilities, its combat power increased 10 times, in this state it is very difficult to cope with it. After all, it took them three squads to kill it. Feng King asked, was it the Badger King? And what happened then? Feng Yumo replied that they handed over the crystal to the government. Zhang Yuan asked where he could get this crystal. He definitely needs a complex, royal one. Feng Yumo said that he could not teach him how to use a weapon as compensation. Let him let him settle the matter. Feng King told Zhang Yuan that he could trust him. Feng Yumo stood up and said that he would return to Guangyuan. Can he send a letter to the address of the academy? Zhang Yuan agreed and when he left, he said that he just left at 3 a.m. Is he some kind of demon in his eyes? Feng King replied that he was not afraid of him. He wants to finish his business as quickly as possible in order to find crystals for his brother. Zhang Yuan asked what kind of crystals. He replied that these were crystals of snow snakes with immunity to death. After a while, Feng Yuma put the box of crystals next to his brother's bed and said that he had brought the crystals. Even if the hope is small, he should try. When he becomes the head of the family, he will do everything to return his last name. After Fang Yumo left, his brother thought he was an idiot, the real reason for his illness was the Fang family. A shadow wrapped around him and he thought that he would take the crystals. Having absorbed the crystals, the voice reported that the shadow servant had acquired the ability to be immune to death. Hearing this, he was greatly surprised. After a while, in the morning, the courier came to Zhang Yuan and said that the delivery was not easy, let him give him a good review. The courier got on the moped and said that in the future, let him contact him by phone and get a 20% discount. When the courier left, Zhang Yuan opened the box and, seeing the crystals, wondered if these must be the same badger crystals. Inside he saw a note and read it. The note said that since she left that day without saying goodbye, he couldn't sleep or eat. He never thought that one day they might meet again. He wants to meet at the Fisherman's Pier on September 15th at 8 p.m. Zhang Yuan thought, did this guy write a love letter? What kind of woman is this? What should he do? He didn't take Feng Yumo's number, should he ask Feng King? He imagined how he would react to this and thought that he would probably photograph this letter and publish it somewhere. He'll just give it to him the next time we meet. Having entered his house, he took out one of the crystals and the system reported that he had found a crystal of a ghostly badger. Does he want to absorb it? The phantom badger crystal has the following abilities, green level fearlessness, which cannot be upgraded, green level 1 fury strike, which can be upgraded, green level poison eater, which cannot be upgraded, not terribly removes mind control, and rage strike improves a random combat skill. With the help of a poison eater, he becomes immune to poisons. The higher the concentration of toxins in the body, the stronger its abilities. The maximum increase in attack power does not exceed 148%. Zhang Yuan decided to absorb all the crystals and Fury Strike improved to the blue second level. He took the sword and decided to activate the Rage Strike, after which he swung the sword several times and, looking at the sword, he realized what the sword was for. At this time, in the student council conference room, the guy exclaimed that he did not agree with the entry of freshman Zhang Yuan. Since when can someone like him join them? 
He is a member of the disciplinary committee. This is ridiculous. This guy's name is Lebo. He is a member of the student council's propaganda committee. The girl told him not to get excited. The president just took him to carry out all sorts of small assignments. Her name is Jang Ruo. She is the secretary of the student council. The other guy said he didn't think so. Members of the disciplinary committee must be distinguished by their strength and morals. They cannot take just anyone. His name is Shan Guan. He said that he was also a former member of the disciplinary committee and he did not agree with this decision. Feng King asked him to explain himself and he said that let him join them, but as an assistant. At this time, a lesson was taking place in which Zhang Yuan and his sister were present. The teacher said that a crystal becomes a crystal only after the death of the being in which this crystal existed in the form of energy. Zhang Yuan raised his hand and asked, after a person dies, a crystal also appears from him. The teacher replied that they should not compare the structure of a person with the structure of representatives of other races. Zhang Yuan asked what would happen if someone absorbed the crystal and gave birth to a child. The teacher sighed and said that pregnant women were strictly forbidden to experiment with crystals. Let him not be carried away by such thoughts. After school, Zhang Yuan and his sister went to the dining room. He transferred food from his portion to her and said that she was still growing, so she needed to eat more. She replied that she was no longer a child. Feng King sat down with them and told Zhang Yuan that his sister was even nicer than they say. Zhang Yuan frowned and told him to take a step aside. Feng King asked him to stop and said that he would have to wait for her to come of age anyway. Zhang Yuan broke his chopsticks irritably and asked what did he say. Feng King said that he was overdoing it, is she really his sister? Zhang Lan hugged her brother's hand and said that it couldn't be otherwise. Feng King imagined the two of them traveling on a train and asked, Zhang's release. Zhang Yuan hit him and exclaimed, what is the student council president thinking about? Zhang Lan asked what does this mean? Zhang Yuan replied that she was too young for such things. Feng King sat down at the table again and laughingly said that this is a joke, why is he so angry? Zhang Lan said that she now understands who she was talking to on the phone when her brother went to the hospital. Feng King confirmed her words and said that she could call him Feng King. She pointed her finger at him and said that his glasses were broken, he could get hurt. He replied that he has special glasses, without them he scares people. She asked if she could take a look. He took off his glasses and said that only for her sake would he make an exception today. She saw that he had glowing purple eyes and said that he had such beautiful eyes, they also glow. Zhang Yuan asked, does he have such talent? He replied that when his mother was three months pregnant, she failed to absorb the crystal, but he absorbed it. He was born a true warrior, his body is stronger than that of ordinary people. Zhang Yuan thought that the teacher had told him that such things were strictly forbidden. But it doesn't matter, it has nothing to do with him. Feng King said that he almost forgot to tell him that he is now a member of the disciplinary committee, so he goes on patrol at lunchtime. Zhang Yuan asked, wasn't he going to be kicked out? He replied that the council members were nice guys. By the way, doesn't his sister want some spicy chicken? She was happy about the spicy chicken and after a short pause, Feng King said that the academy is a decent place, there are almost no fights, but things haven't been going well in the union lately. He cleared his throat and said they would sort it out. He will help him so that no one dies. Zhang Lan was delighted and asked her brother, so he was going on patrol. She wants with him. He did not agree and said that she should not miss classes. She got upset and said she didn't want to go to class. After that, he went on patrol and the girls began to look back at him. One of them asked, is this the new member of the disciplinary committee? Another girl said that this guy is pretty cute. Zhang Yuan passed by them and using super perception, he felt that someone was following him. Why don't they find some secluded place for their showdown? He walked a little further and stopped. He turned around and told his pursuers that they would meet at 3 o'clock, behind a pillar 15 meters away. Just don't let them be late. After a while, at the meeting place, the student council member told Zhang Yuan that without special skills, they would not be easily detected. Let him take off his clothes, kneel down and bark, then perhaps he will let him go. Zhang Yuan grinned and asked, is this a special greeting at the academy? He's in. The guy asked, is he an obedient boy? Zhang Yuan approached him and asked what he was talking about. He meant that if he took off his clothes, got down on his knees and barked, he would let him go. The guy got angry and attacked him using terrifying sound waves that cause mental shock and paralyze the target. Zhang Yuan used his fearlessness ability, which removes mind control, and asked why he opened his mouth. He hit him and said that it was now too late for him to beg for mercy. After that, he struck him a few more times and he fell to the ground, and foam flowed from his mouth. A friend of the student council member thought it was impossible. Only a few have previously managed to resist this trick. Who is this guy? Zhang Yuan asked, won't they take him to the hospital? The student council member's friends picked him up and ran to the hospital. On the way, they met Zhang Lan, who saw all this and thought, who could just attack a harmless person? She stepped out in front of them and ordered them to stop. Let them get his phone. She stamped her foot, breaking the path and advised them to give it to her in a good way. 
The guy handed her the phone and told her to take it. She smiled sarcastically and told him to lower it to the ground, let her lean on her two hands. The second guy put the student council members in the position she asked and the other guy said it was a little too much. She said it was a great pose. She unlocked her phone and started taking pictures of the student council member from all angles. She laughed and said she would send it to his friends. She approached his friends and asked if they saw it. Let them repost. The guy asked her to let them go, he promises they will do everything. She asked, will they explain to their friend that it is wrong to behave this way? By the way, she filmed the whole process. If they disobey, she will throw everything to him. She left, and the guy said that he thought that this Zhang Yuan was evil. After a while, Feng King came to the student council member in the hospital and he told him that this guy is so cruel. He not only beat him, but also published a photo. Feng King looked at the photos and thought that if he had told him about him earlier, they wouldn't have had so much fun. He looked up at him and asked him to tell him what he had done to him. The guy replied that he used his signature move as usual, but not only did he not get hurt, but he also pinned him to the ground. Feng King thought that the waves had no effect on him, which meant that he had successfully absorbed fearlessness. He asked what happened next. Did he use a weapon? The guy replied that he didn't have a weapon. Feng King was surprised and asked how he could do it without a weapon. He thought, had he absorbed the blow of rage? It's hard for him to talk about it. The guy said that if he had a gun, he would have died already. Feng King headed towards the exit and said that since he was alive, he would go. The guy said that they are now enemies, how can he continue his training? Feng King turned around and said that no one cared about him. He will stay at home for a couple of months and then return. The guy asked him to help him and Feng King, leaving the hospital room, said that such injuries could not be cured using his technique. After that he came to Zhang Yuan and brought him something. He asked what is it? Feng King replied that this was a badge for 68th place. This is the official ranking of combat power in which only young people under 28 years of age participate. Zhang Yuan asked, is Xuan Ming in 68th place? Feng King said that he and Feng Yumo had been thinking for a long time about how to hide his real identity. Doesn't he like it? Zhang Yuan turned away and asked, is he serious now? Why couldn't they just call him Zhang Er? Why is this rating even needed? Feng King replied that it was like a repository of his talents. But if he does not move further down the list, questions will arise. He walked up to the box and said that he had brought him a weapon. This is a development of the Supervision Bureau, an improved version of the trial sample. Maybe he should try this. Feng King showed him the sword and Zhang Yuan told him to leave the weapon and leave. Feng King asked why he answered him so coldly. He needs to go to the training ground to try it out. Zhang Yuan looked at the weapons and after that they began to train. After a while, the beaten Feng King lay on the floor and sighed heavily. He laughed and thought that he had actually managed to absorb the blow of rage. While examining the sword, Zhang Yuan told him that the psychiatric ward of the hospital is not bad, he advises him to drop by there. Feng King laughed and said that he had finally learned how to handle bladed weapons. Daddy is proud of him. Zhang Yuan kicked him out of the room and looked at the weapons he brought. He took the blades out of the box and thought that he was quite meticulous, he even prepared the blades for him. A group of shooters sometimes trains here, he can try practicing with knives using clay pigeons. He took out a training device, the description of which said that the default speed is 120 km per hour, three plates fly out at the same time with an interval of 10 seconds. Zhang Yuan confirmed the start and the training apparatus told him to get ready and move 20 meters away from the apparatus. The first round will begin after three beeps. After that, three plates flew out of the apparatus and Zhang Yuan prepared to throw daggers. The training apparatus told him to get ready, the next launch was about to begin. Several plates flew out of the apparatus at once and Zhang Yuan threw daggers at them. The device reported that the next launch was about to begin. Zhang Yuan hit the plates again and the device again announced the next launch. With light and quick movements, he instantly threw the daggers at the plates. The device congratulated him on completing the first training session. His rating was 100 points. Zhang Yuan thought that as expected, it was simply impossible to stop. The training apparatus reported that the next launch was about to begin and he thought that he could try to use this thing to increase his own level. This is not bad, he will train like this every day. Time passed, Zhang Yuan sighed and said that he had finally reached the next level. In the end he only scored 80 points, he thinks he has room to improve. Lessons, training, events, this is real student life. And no assignment from the student union. He looked at the electronic calendar and saw that it was 6 p.m., September 15th. Suddenly he thought, today is the 15th. He almost forgot. After that, I immediately ran to the fishing pier and thought, why is no one here? Suddenly he heard the noise of a helicopter from above and the girl, throwing down a ladder for him, told him to jump. Zhang Yuan looked at her and thought that her appearance was truly unique. He climbed the stairs and she extended her hand to help him. When he climbed into the helicopter, she hugged him tightly and said that she thought he wouldn't come. No wonder she worked so hard on this note. She knew that one day he would understand everything. 
Suddenly she realized that he was not the one she was waiting for and asked who he was. She was upset and said that he didn't come. He broke her heart. She is nothing to him, just an empty place. Zhang Yun said that he didn't actually see the note, it came to him. He came to explain everything. He headed towards the stairs and said that in that case he would go. She asked him to wait and asked if it was for his sake. Are they friends with him? Zhang Yuan confirmed her words and she thought that a proud guy like Feng Yumo came to ask her for help. They must really be good friends. This guy must be a good warrior. She asked, is he strong? Let him answer her, this is very important. Zhang Yuan hesitantly confirmed her words and she said that they need such talents. She approached the pilot and said that they had a new guy. They need to return as soon as possible. The girl showed him the rest of the squad and said that her name is Inkaij, she is the leader of the Gods of War team. The guy said his name is Jan Hu, he is in charge of operations. The guy sitting next to him said that his name is Xiang Yuba, he is in charge of protecting the team. Another team member said hello and said his name was Wu Jun and he was a doctor. The pilot said his name was Mao Wai, he was a scout. Zhang Yuan smiled and said that they could call him Xu and Ming. And Kaij welcomed him to their team and he thought that now he should carry out the task instead of Feng Yumo. She said his hand was so cold. He replied that this is normal for carriers of the ice system. Wu Jun looked at him carefully and thought that he seemed to have seen his name somewhere. He checked the rankings on his phone and realized that he was ranked 68th. Zhang Yuan sat down on the seat and Kaij said that to be honest, the task is not an easy one. A week ago, several people entered the property to engage in poaching. The nearest troops went there some time ago, but they were all poisoned by an unknown toxin, and they lost one of them. Feng Yumo is immune to toxins, that's why she wanted to ask him for help, she would understand if he didn't want to take part in it. Zhang Yun said that they are almost there, he can't chill alone while sitting on the plane. Zhang Yuba moved closer to him and said that he was confident. He offers him sparring. Zhang Yun froze him and said there was no time for this. And Kaij said it was cool, but how long will it last? He replied that it would last a couple of minutes. She was surprised and asked why she didn't know that freezing could last so long. Zhang Yuan replied that in fact, he has a skill that increases the power of other abilities. He thought he had better find an excuse for his strength. And Kaij asked what abilities he has. Zhang Yuan replied that he has a heat sensitivity of 1 kilometer. Wu Jun was surprised and said that this could not be. Zhang Yuan cleared his throat and said that it was amplified. Wu Jun thought that in ancient legends, a hero named Xuan Mo was the lord of snow and ice. This guy must be not much inferior to him. But why had he not heard of such a strong man before? Moreover, he is just a student. And Kaij asked Zhang Yuan, he doesn't have any weapons with him, does he? Will the dagger suit him? He confirmed her words and after that they landed at their destination. And Kaij said that according to the latest information, poachers are somewhere in the area, they all need to be alert and stay in line. Zhang Yuan stopped them and said that there were several animals ahead after 900 meters. It looks like it's a pack of wolves, something attracted them. And Kaij said that the wolves here are bait for monsters and are fed regularly. And the fact that they are here, and the troops have been destroyed, is a bad sign. Zhang Yuan suggested looking around and they moved on. They saw that the wolves were crowded around the fire and Kaij said that the smell of meat was so strong that it was not difficult for them to even find the source. She is afraid that this is some kind of trap. Zhang Yuan said that he would act as bait for them to show themselves. She asked him to wait and said that there was probably poison in there. He replied that he was not afraid of poison. And Kaij exclaimed, is he serious? Isn't it extremely difficult to absorb this ability? Zhang Yuan lazily confirmed her words and she asked who he was. He said that he went and then he came out of hiding. And Kaij said they will be here to cover him. He asked if he met anyone, should he kill him or take him prisoner? She replied that let him shoot to kill. The wolves turned towards Zhang Yuan and immediately howled. He thought that the wolves did not attack him, but howled, showing that the enemy was nearby. He felt several people on both sides and thought that he needed to clear this field. He grabbed the dagger and the countdown began. He cut off the head of the wolf and at the same moment killed the next one. After 25 seconds he finished and the system asked if he wanted to activate the scorpion venom. Zhang Yuan grinned and thought that he needed to move forward. He activated the scorpion's venom and his abilities increased by 108%. Zhang Yuan said that this is a stupid toxin, so weak. And Kaij asked what did he say. Mao Wai replied that he was complaining that the poison was not strong enough. And Kaij said that poison lets you know that the enemy is nearby. They need to prepare to attack. Suddenly Zhang Yuan quickly threw his daggers and they were surprised. The daggers stabbed into the heads of their enemies and Zhang Yuan asked, Is that all? They are so weak. And Kaij asked if they saw it too. Jan Hu said that he didn't want to talk about it. Mao Wai was upset and said that the enemies had excellent camouflage. He didn't even notice anything. Zhang Yuan looked around and said that there was no danger yet. And Kaij noticed his dagger and thought that these flying daggers were similar to the ones the surveillance bureau was working on. And there was a serial number. This is far from the most popular weapon. 
Maybe this is a special model. This guy is definitely not that simple. She asked is he okay. He gave her a blank look and she thought that he killed those people so calmly she shouldn't ask him such questions. Zhang Yuba praised him and said that he was very good with knives. Jan who asked how many years of practice does it take to master throwing knives so perfectly. Zhang Yuan replied that it was nothing, he just practiced with the plates every day. Jan who was surprised and thought, is this the same device that was stopped being used due to the complexity of training? He asked how he uses this machine. Zhang Yuan replied that he is using normal mode and raising level by level. Jan who asked how he dealt with it. He failed to pass a single level. In response, Zhang Yuan asked, are abilities needed to pass the level? Jan who became upset and began to think that he was worthless trash. At this time, Ankaids approached Zhang Yuan and asked, can he see how many abilities they have used? He replied that they used wolf pack control, scorpion venom and super camouflage. At least three abilities. She grabbed his hand and asked, scorpion poison, is he sure? Zhang Yuan confirmed her words and said that he had the ability to absorb poisons. She thanked him on behalf of their team and said that many of her fighters were still in the hospital because doctors could not recognize the poison. She shouted for them to immediately connect her to the hospital. Zhang Yuan asked, is it really that important? Wu Jun replied that the current treatment is not a panacea, but now he has saved many lives. Zhang Yuan thought that it turns out that most professionals are not that strong. Not everyone manages to absorb the power of crystals, so they cannot do without technology. And Kaij called out to him and asked him what he thought they should do next. He replied that since their target was poachers, it would be best for them to catch them first. They certainly won't be able to sneak away, so they might as well try. It is best to take someone hostage to organize negotiations. Single units like these guys are much easier to intimidate than, for example, ordinary military personnel. And Kaij asked and he suggests they just wait for them. He confirmed her words and felt someone's presence behind him. He turned around and told her to look, wasn't it them? Behind them they saw several people. A blonde man came forward, he greeted them and said that they had finally managed to attract such people here. He approached Nkaij and said that it is even more pleasant that this company is such a beautiful lady. She asked what they forgot here. He thanked them again and said that if it weren't for them, they would have died. She asked him to stop and he apologized to her. Wu Jun told Zhang Yuan that his name is Robs, he is one of the strongest guys in all of Germany, so he should be careful with him. Zhang Yuan asked, what about the others? Wu Jun replied that he had not seen them, but he was local. Mao Wai pointed his finger at the guy named Zhao Zhang and asked, isn't he dead? What did he even forget here? The country has invested so much in him, and he got involved with these poachers. Zhao Zhang said that he should not make him laugh. After his refusal, they suppressed his powers and deprived him of all resources. If it weren't for outside help, he would never have known what it means to be free and happy. He can have whatever he wants, not to mention the strength. In contrast to China, where ordinary people do not always even get to the crystals and use energy to select the target of attack. But before he could finish speaking, a knife was stuck in his forehead and his comrade managed to stop it. The dagger fell in front of him and Zhang Yuan thought that since he was able to stop his throwing knife, he should use something else. Robs picked up the dagger and said in his native language that the forging skills in China are truly amazing. It's a pity that their owner has no grace. And Kaij said that she didn't understand what he said. Now Wai said that he seems to be praising the quality of the knives. After a short pause, Zhang Yuan answered him in his language, saying that those who insulted their country would be punished and the traitors would die. And he does not intend to have discussions with the future dead. Rob said with a smile that he spoke their language quite well. He originally planned to leave them alone, but he's quite an interesting shot. Let him join them, he will guarantee excellent conditions. And Kaij asked what did he say. Zhang Yuan replied that he said that after killing them all, he wanted to recruit him. And Kaij asked what he was going to do. Zhang Yuan approached Robs and asked him to return the knife to him. Wu Jun thought, why did he suddenly need Xu and Ming? Zhang Yuan took the dagger and thanked Robs, and he said that in China they say that confidence is above all. Wu Jun increased Zhang Yuan's abilities by 20% and he thought that help had arrived. At the same moment he attacked Robs and said that he had already spoken, he does not discuss with the dead. He froze them and immediately afterwards threw daggers at their heads. He killed the rest of the poachers, but the dagger bounced off Rob's head and he said that the vile Chinese attacked them on the sly and wanted to kill them. Zhang Yuan thought, not only did he stop the knife, but he was also able to escape from the ice. How strong does his blow have to be to cause damage to him? At the same moment Rob's approached him and asked why he froze. Immediately after this, Zhang Yuan was thrown back several meters and Wu Jun called out to him in concert. And Kaij told him to heal him, but he checked his breathing and said that he seemed numb. She turned around in surprise and Wu Jun said that he had no heartbeat or breathing. And Kaij said that now is not the time for them to shed tears. They need to deal with him. Wu Jun put Zhang Yuan on the ground and he thought that he might be cold, but he was ashamed of them. 
they just took it and buried it. Zhang Yuba grabbed Rob's and he told him not to even try, he couldn't stop him. Suddenly he lit up and said that he would show him real strength. Zhang Yuba suddenly released his grip and shouted that it was hot. And Kaij said that this is a fire giant's unique ability. This guy is a real pro in close combat. Jan who asked what should he do. His crossbow will melt from the high temperature. And Kaij said they should try a mental attack. She told everyone to get ready and released a destructive sound wave that made Rob's feel sick. He grabbed his head and said that they were being cunning again. But he couldn't just die, at this rate his human body would simply burn out. He rose to his feet and said that he would do it for the glory of his country. A stream of flame rushed at them and Nkaij said that she didn't understand a word. Zhang Yuba said that when he returns home, he will study foreign languages. Jan who asked if they could even return. Zhang Yun stood up and said that they were no match for him, they needed to retreat. They were surprised that he was alive and he said that he had already told them that he would not die so easily. Wu Jun said that he was dead but came back to life, he must be immune to death. Zhang Yun stepped forward and told Robes that their country has always stood for freedom and justice, so he invites him to fight. Robes asked why he should meet him halfway. In response, Zhang Yun asked, wouldn't this technique kill him? He cannot stand against everyone, but against him alone he has a chance. Robes laughed and said that he accepted his offer. He will show him what he is capable of. And Kaids told Zhang Yun that he didn't need to fight, he would die. But he didn't listen to her and told Robes not to restrain himself. Now Y grabbed and Kaij and ran away, telling her to pull herself together. She said they couldn't just leave him. Wu Jun said that their presence would only hinder him, they should trust him. And Kaij said he must survive. Robs told Zhang Yuan that he appreciated his bravery, he was still alive. Zhang Yuan thanked him and said that he shouldn't compare them. Moreover, the person who should die is definitely not him. The system reported that his super perception ability had been enhanced. He received a new skill, Fire Strike, which he can improve. His freezing ability has been improved, and he has gained a new skill, Eternal Ice, which cannot be upgraded. His regeneration ability has been improved, he has received a new skill, Immortal Body, which he can improve. His Furious Strike ability has been improved, he has received the Combat Master skill, which he can improve. The Combat Master was born to kill, he can destroy the enemy with any type of weapon. Robs asked, is this his true power? Then they will start now. But he didn't have time to do anything when a dome of ice appeared around him and Zhang Yuan said that he had already started. Rob's body returned to normal and he thought what is going on? Why can't he make a sound? What is this invisible air wall? Zhang Yuan said that this is a special ability that changes the air temperature. The formula is simple, he just needs to take into account his temperatures and cooling time, this way he can change the pressure and the space that surrounds him will turn into a vacuum. Robs began to choke and Zhang Yuan said that the next stage would simply burn his human body, but fire cannot exist in a vacuum, he lost to physics. After that, blood gushed from Rob's body and he fell exhausted to the ground and apologized to his daughter. His body disappeared and a fiery crystal was left behind. Zhang Yuan approached it and thought that the effect would end now, and then weakness would begin. He didn't lose consciousness thanks to his ability enhancement. He picked up the crystal and the system reported that he found the crystal, does he want to absorb it? The crystal has the following abilities, incredible strength, red third level, which cannot be improved. Steel armor of the red second level, which cannot be upgraded. Fire giant is the first level of disaster that cannot be improved. Zhang Yun thought that of course he had a special crystal, it seems that it does not explode as usual, but hides inside the body. Why is nothing said about this in the textbooks? The guys may well not have known about it either. He thinks if he takes this crystal there will be trouble. Most abilities can't be improved anyway, so it's not much use. After a while he thought he would just bury it and pretend he didn't see anything. If they're poachers, there's bound to be something useful in their backpacks, right? He opened the backpack and saw yellow crystals inside that were available for absorption. When absorbed, he can gain the yellow level flirting ability. This skill will show off all its charm, the number is unlimited. Zhang Yun thought, what is this? For this they killed several small bear cubs and burned them alive. But since such a person came for this crystal, they must be quite valuable. He took the backpack and thought that if he didn't get hung up on the name, maybe it would become a useful skill. He decided to absorb all the crystals and the system reported that he had received the yellow maximum level flirting ability. His abilities improve when he looks cute. He has gained a new red level 2 super cute ability that he can upgrade. With this ability, the enemy will not be able to resist his charm, the use is unlimited. Zhang Yuan cursed, and at this time Mao Wai told the squad captain that the flames had gone out, the battle must be over. And Kaij said that they should go and check then. They saw Zhang Yuan sitting on a stone and she called out to him. She ran to him and said that she knew he would survive. She tripped and he said that the task was completed, could they please send him back to the academy as soon as possible? Mao Wai asked in surprise, is he still studying? 
Jiang Yuan confirmed his words and said that his sister was waiting for him to have dinner together. She will be angry if he doesn't come. After that, they went back to the academy and Zhang Yuan read all her messages. She texted him last night, why can't she reach him? Did he forget to charge his phone? Then in the morning she asked why he wasn't at breakfast. What's happened? Ten minutes after the previous message, she wrote that she went to his dorm and he wasn't there. He sighed and thought that when he returned, he would have to explain himself to her and Feng King. It's a pity that the phone doesn't have reception here. He asked in Kaij where he could buy a phone that would work in special areas. She replied that for such a phone he needed permission, he wouldn't just buy it. But if he joins their team, they will help him with it. Zhang Yuan looked out the window and thought that he would think about it. She said that actually with his strength he should try. Their salaries are decent and they provide satellite phones. Zhang Yuan asked where is it? She replied that this is in Cheshu, this is a special department in which there are only nine people, each of whom is strong, like a full-fledged team. They usually work independently on particularly complex tasks that ordinary teams cannot do. She asked, well, was he interested? Zhang Yuan replied that this was not so and Mao Wai, seeing three people on the landing site, said that it seems that the academy misunderstood them. The director brought people with him. They got out of the helicopter and the director greeted in Kaij. He introduced himself and said that he was glad to meet you. He pointed to the man and said that this was their Dean Gu Yan, and to his left was Shang Guan, the student representative. And Kaij pointed to Zhang Yuan and said that they flew past and dropped off his student. The director asked if he was from their academy. And Kaij asked Zhang Yuan, he is Xu and Ming, right? Why doesn't the director know him? Zhang Yuan remained silent and Gu Yan took the director aside and said that this was Zhang Yuan from the special class, whom Major Lin personally recommended for enrollment. Shang Guan heard this and thought, so this trash got into their academy through connections. He thought he was here on merit, but now he feels deceived. He pointed his finger at Zhang Yuan and said that their academy doesn't need such trash. He got to them thanks to connections and still dared to challenge him. Zhang Yuan began to deny his words and thought, who is this guy? Why is he so mad at him? He walked past him and said that let them chat here, but he needed to go. He thought that if he stayed any longer, he would miss dinner with his sister. Shang Guan told him to stop and grabbed his hand and said that today they will fight, even if he doesn't even try to leave. And Kaij looked at him and thought that with this he had literally signed his own death warrant. But Shang Guan threw Zhang Yuan over himself and she was very surprised. He asked, isn't this guy so weak that he's comparable to an ordinary person? And Kaij ran up to Zhang Yuan and told him not to close his eyes. Shang Guan said that he almost didn't touch him, he was just pretending. Wu Jun used his healing ability on Zhang Yuan and he said that he is fine, he will get up on his own. He thought that even though his regenerative ability had weakened, it was still useful. And Kaij told Shang Guan to apologize to him immediately. He asked why he should apologize. She said they were shedding blood for their country. And not only did she not hear the words of gratitude, but he also threw it over his hip. How dare he? Zhang Yuan said that he did not shed his blood. She turned around abruptly and told him to shut up. The director made Shang Guan bow and said that it was all the academy's fault, let him not immediately apologize. He said he didn't care who she was. He won't apologize to them. And Kaij asked, does he criticize others after this? She will report today's incident to the head of the military district. She hopes he gets what he deserves. After that, she took Zhang Yuan to the dormitory and the director said that it was all over, they were definitely finished. Bu Yan told the director not to panic, their academy has such a rich history, it won't be closed because of one small scandal. The director asked why he didn't address him according to his position. Gu Yan remained silent and he said that it was all because he felt that he would soon cease to be a director. After some time in the hostel, Zhang Yuan opened the door to his room and Feng King joyfully exclaimed that he was back. Zhang Yuan abruptly closed the door and said that he must have entered the wrong door. Feng King left the room and said that he had been missing all night and returned with a girl. Is it really him? Zhang Yuan interrupted him and exclaimed, what does he mean by this? He went into the room and told them to chat for now and he would go change clothes. And Kaij told Feng King that she didn't think he would be accepted into the academy. He replied that he could not challenge the allocation. Since she brought him, she can go, right? She said that he shouldn't think that he can tell her anything because he belongs to the academy. She started to leave and he said that she couldn't find a better person in the world than him. And she knows it very well. After a while in the dining room, Zhang Yuan told him at dinner everything that happened to him and his sister asked, so this woman dragged him into some dangerous adventure, because of this he only returned now. He replied that she needed help, so he couldn't refuse. Feng King said that it was lucky that Lan Lan told him about this, otherwise it is not clear what would have happened. Zhang Yuan wanted to say something to his sister and she interrupted him and said that in fact she did not approve of their marriage. She made him skip classes, after the wedding she will definitely treat him even worse. Zhang Yuan took her hands and told her not to worry. Even if he gets married someday, 
he won't skip classes. Zhang Lan asked what he would do if this impudent person came again. He replied that he would just get rid of her. Zhang Lan looked at Feng King and said that from now on, he will protect her brother when she is not around. He was surprised and told her not to worry, anyone who wants to offend him is dead. He thought that it seemed like he would need to do more training, he would definitely need it. At this time, a guy was sitting at the next table and writing something in a notebook. He looked at Zhang Yuan and thought that his height and physique were inferior to his peers, his face was pale, as if he was suffering from malnutrition. He has a poor appetite, so he gives almost all the meat to his sister. He is an ordinary student union member who receives a scholarship. So why doesn't he eat? Does he have anorexia? He turned his gaze to Zhang Lan and thought that his sister's appetite, on the contrary, had increased, she always takes extra chicken and other spicy dishes. He looked at Feng King and thought that he didn't like spicy food, and there wasn't a single piece of chili on his plate. After that, he wrote a message that today he was going to invite his sister to a restaurant. He, of course, could go with them, but what a pity that he doesn't eat spicy food. After they finished eating, he called out to Zhang Yuan and said that he heard that a good restaurant had opened not far from the academy. Would he like to go there together? Zhang Yuan did not agree, but his sister suddenly raised her hand and said that she wanted to eat. Zhang Yuan smiled nervously and pointed a finger at the guy and asked, did he think he didn't notice how he had been sneakily spying on his sister all this time? The guy wanted to answer him something, but Zhang Yuan interrupted him and asked, does he think he won't do anything to him, since he's older? The guy replied that he had misunderstood him, in fact he was looking at him. Zhang Lan sharply turned him towards her and asked, so her brother is liked not only by girls, but also by boys. He said he just wanted to make friends, nothing like that. Zhang Yuan took his sister's hand and ran, telling her that he was definitely a pervert, she should stay away from him. She ran after him and asked, but what about dinner? He replied that they would go there themselves. Feng King looked at them and asked, are they going to eat somewhere? Let them take it with them. He caught up with them and Zhang Yuan asked, does he like spicy food? Feng King adjusted his glasses and asked what he did there this morning. Zhang Yuan asked, did he see everything? Feng King confirmed his words and asked, does he remember the guy who threw him over his hip? He was fined for insult and slander. It turns out he was agitating the student council to kick him out. Zhang Yuan said that he understood and thanked him for covering for him. After a while, in a new restaurant. At the entrance of the restaurant there was an announcement that in honor of the opening there was a 15% discount for a month. Zhang Lan turned around and told Zhang Yuan that there are so many people here. He suggested that she just buy something and take it with her, but suddenly someone called out to him and told him to come here. He saw that the girl was waving her hand at him and asked if she was telling him. She confirmed his words and said that he was a real celebrity on the academy forum. She wanted to say her name, but Feng King interrupted her and said that he thought what kind of vile person could take a table for four and sit there alone. She asked displeasedly, where did he come from here? He smiled and replied that he had come to eat. He approached the cook and said that he wanted one maladin, not too spicy, not too hot and not too hot. After he ordered his food, he returned to the table and there was silence. The girl looked at them and thought, why are they looking at her so strangely? While she was thinking about this, Zhang Lan looked at her as a manhunter. Zhang Yuan looked at her like she was a punching bag, and Feng King simply studied her. Zhang Lan asked what her name was. She's sure she has a weird name. She replied that her name was Su Wanning, nothing strange. Zhang Lan asked Feng King, what would he say? He said that she is a strong assistant, she has a buff of 448% of her strength when meeting an enemy, this lasts for a whole three minutes. She is the only such fighter in the country. Zhang Lan said that when she grows up, she will no longer be the only one. Zhang Yuan patted her on the head and said that she is still small, so don't let her rush to grow up. Feng King whispered in his ear that she seemed to care about him. Zhang Yuan replied that she didn't look worried. Feng King said that their school beauty doesn't want to lose face. Zhang Yuan looked at Su Wanning and said that if she came here knowing that he would also be here, it turns out that she has something to tell him. She said that the academy annually selects students to participate in the competition. Last time they collected one team of six people, and this year there were two of four people. Zhang Yuan asked what does this have to do with him. She said that due to some events they had three openings. Would he like to try to participate? He turned away from her and said that he was not interested. She was surprised and he said that it was not good to fight with classmates. Moreover, aren't her abilities sufficiently developed? Is it really difficult for them to win the championship with such data? She got angry and asked, but wouldn't it be better to assemble a team with maximum strength? Feng King told Zhang Yuan that the most important thing for them was to win quickly. Zhang Yuan said that only weaklings care about such things. She wanted to answer them something, but couldn't and decided to leave saying that she had nothing to tell them. The waitress brought them food and Zhang Lan laughed and said that since she left, Malatin won't eat her. Feng King said that it tastes strange, will she like it? She replied that she needed to add a couple of spoons of chili to it. 
Feng King said that he thought it was Shan Guan's idea, but he couldn't even imagine that she would come in person. Zhang Yuan asked, do they know each other? He replied that they were the main trio of the academy. She decided not only to kick him out of the team, but also to win him over to her side. Zhang Lan tried Malatin and said it was so spicy. Zhang Yuan gave her his portion and after a short pause, Feng King said that in addition to team competitions, there are also individual competitions. Obviously, this format would have suited him much better, but she probably didn't specifically mention this or the reward. He saw that he ate spicy Malatin at once and asked in surprise, is he crazy? Is his tongue not working? Zhang Yuan swallowed the soup and thought that his tongue really didn't work. He replied that he was fine, so what was he saying? What award are we talking about? Feng King replied that the winners of both categories receive prizes, from the first to third place players receive high category crystals, from fourth to eighth, high category, the last two places, medium category. In addition, these guys can join any team for practice, and after graduation, university representatives line up behind them. Zhang Lan asked, isn't this a competition for warriors? Why did that girl come for her brother? Feng King asked Zhang Yuan, has he not told her yet? Zhang Yuan replied that he was just looking for an opportunity to discuss this. Feng King said that he should then tell her everything right now. Zhang Yuan told his sister that he was actually a warrior. She was surprised and asked how much energy he absorbed. He replied that it was enough. She put the chopsticks on the table and started crying, saying that now her brother will die because he doesn't have long left. Feng King asked what is she saying? What does it mean that he will die soon? She wiped her tears and said that she only absorbed two abilities and 20 years of her life were taken away from her and her brother was probably much more. He was very surprised by her words and after that they returned to the academy. They looked at the crystal and Zhang Lan said that originally Uncle Lin gave her a crystal with three abilities and they should have taken away 30 years of her life. Looking at her, Zhang Yuan understood why she fought so desperately in her past life. She knew her life was running out. He turned to Feng King and asked, does absorption actually take away years of life? Can this be fixed? He replied that as far as he knew, with normal absorption, abilities are absorbed and life is not shortened much, but his sister's situation is unheard of. Zhang Yuan asked, is it yes or no? Feng King replied that this is true, usually the years of life are indeed shortened a little. Unfortunately, there is currently no technology that can prevent this. He took off his glasses and looked at her and saw her remaining years of life. He thought that he didn't pay attention to it before, but now he sees that she really lost 20 years of her life. Since this feature is characterized by heredity, the situation of her brother is probably similar. His current life expectancy is zero years, but is this possible? Zhang Yuan closed the crystal box and told his sister to never do this again. She said that Uncle Lin has such high hopes for her. Zhang Yuan said that he would explain everything to him, let her return the crystal. He hugged her and said that if she died, his life would lose meaning. Let her promise him that she will not continue to do this. She burst into tears and asked how she could protect him if she did not become a warrior. There are so many scary creatures in the world, and it's easy for ordinary people. Zhang Yuan interrupted her and asked what do ordinary people mean to her. She looked up at him with a blank look and he said that people become stronger through exercise. They win wars through strategies, they create weapons through technology, they heal wounds, all these are talents. The power of crystals is not the only thing that can make a person stronger. The first person to fight back against the monsters certainly did not have such strength. He threw a knife at the wall and told her to look at it, she could do the same if she trained hard. He patted her on the head and said that besides, she already has two abilities, so with hard training she can achieve a lot. She agreed and said that she would try her best. Zhang Yuan looked at Feng King and asked, he hopes his sister will not be investigated like a similar rabbit now. Feng King said that this is nonsense. He put on his glasses and said that these lab rats don't like new trends, so he shouldn't worry about anything. Zhang Yuan sighed with relief and asked Zhang Lan to give him his phone. At this time, Lin Dongling received a call from Zhang Lan and he said that he was listening to her. Suddenly he stopped short, hearing that it was her brother's voice. Zhang Yuan said that something is wrong with his sister, she can no longer absorb the energy of the crystals. So let him take back what he gave her. Lin Dongling said that she will be cured. Zhang Yuan interrupted him and said that it is hereditary, it cannot be cured. Lin Dongling said that he was the one who allowed her to become a warrior. He adjusted the curriculum to suit her, what more does he want? Does he want to replace her? But he doesn't have enough abilities. Zhang Yuan replied that his abilities are no worse than Lan Lan, he will succeed. Lin Dongling asked, how dare he lie to him so openly? In response, Zhang Yuan asked if he wanted him to prove it to him. Lin Dongling said that from now on he is taking away all his and his sister's privileges. If he gets into the top 10 in the individual competition of the student league, he will believe him. After this conversation, Feng King and Zhang Yuan escorted Zhang Lan to the dormitory. Zhang Yuan waved to his sister and said that they would see each other tomorrow. 
They waited until she left and Feng King told him that he could actually arrange for them to live together. Zhang Yuan replied that she could make friends in the dormitory, her student life should not be limited to him alone. Feng King said that he was still too protective of her. Zhang Yuan asked, does the academy know that he sees how long a person will live? He replied that he was the first to know about it. Zhang Yuan asked, does he think he won't reveal his secrets to others? Feng King confirmed his words and said that he would better think about himself. They cut off his resources and set a condition, to enter the top 10, it won't be easy. Maybe he has someone to turn to, like that woman. Zhang Yuan said that's right, he can go to her for help. Feng King didn't think that he would really want to ask her for help and wanted to say something, but Zhang Yuan had already called her. He told Captain and that he had a question. Do they still have resources from the last outing? He would like to have them. After talking a little, he thanked her and said that he owed her. At this time in the warehouse, the man asked, Is this Missin's order? He wrote something down in a notepad and said it was an emergency. How many resources do they have in stock? They need to count everything and bring it. After a while, in the office, the man put the folder on the table and told the other man that his daughter did a great job. He replied that he thought most of the credit went to a guy named Xuan Ming. This man's name is in Guangfeng. He is the commander of the East China military region. He said that many people suffered from poison in this attack. He is afraid that the situation will only get worse in the future. Perhaps a spy had infiltrated them. His interlocutor, Lu Jianlin, looked at the papers thoughtfully and said that the report mentioned that there was a man named Zhao Zhang who used his power. And Guangfeng sighed and said that he might be a member of an underground organization. Their methods are unpredictable and their locations unknown. Although their methods are not always conscientious, they still have their own principles, so officials turn a blind eye to what is happening. But this time they went too far. Lu Jianlin said that it really makes them worry, but his daughter. And Guangfeng asked what's wrong with her. Lu Jianlin handed him the documents and said that last night she gave an order to take away the crystals, more than 2,000 pieces. And Guangfeng dissatisfiedly put the folder on the table and said that this is nonsense. The reasons why no one needs these crystals is because their abilities are ineffective and practically incompatible with others. No matter how much a person tries to absorb them, everything is useless. Lu Jianlin said that the report specifically mentioned this guy's ability to produce poison. And Guangfeng asked, maybe it's better not to give him the crystals. Lu Jianlin put the folder on the table and said that this is difficult to talk about. He offers to give him 1,000 and put him under surveillance. And Guangfeng agreed, and at this time, Feng Yumo shouted at the man. He exclaimed, how is this possible? His brother died for their country, and they won't even let him bury him. How can they hand him over to a research institute like some rat? The man replied that he himself signed an agreement to be a donor in the event of his death, so they would not influence this in any way. Feng Yumo said that he didn't want to dishonor his family name. The man replied that this was not possible during life, and it is impossible after death. At this time, Feng Yumo's brother and the girl were standing outside and eavesdropping on their conversation. The man told Feng Yumo that he was now the heir of the Feng family. No matter how good his brother was, he's dead now, so he doesn't want to talk about it anymore. The girl turned to brother Feng Yumo and asked, did he hear it? This is what the Feng family will look like after his death. Now he won't be able to feel free again. Feng Yumo's brother looked at the cloudy sky and the girl said that she didn't understand what they were thinking about, missing out on such a valuable player. He ignored her and asked her to leave, after which she ran after him and asked him to wait for her. After a while, in Li Wen's office, Zhang Yuan said that he wants to take part in the student league. She was surprised and said that this was a team competition, and he was alone. He replied that he was ready. She said displeasedly that he should have been informed about one thing in advance. She handed him a paper and said that first he needed to fill out a form. He took it and walked away to read it. He sat down at the table and thought, the name of the ability, the source of power, the level, just eight points. He won't write icy blood, it's too conspicuous, and he'll lower his level. After he filled out the form, he gave it to Liu Wen and she was very surprised to see that he was immune to death. She rushed to him and asked him to forgive her. He was surprised and she said that a person can only absorb eight abilities, if he absorbs more, he will die. And he also swallowed immunity to death, this is a very rare ability. Zhang Yuan asked if she could stand up first and then they could talk. She wiped away her tears and said that if she had known about this earlier, she would have given him the best ruin crystal and would not have allowed such a low-grade skill to take up precious space in his body. She started crying again and asked how Major Lin could see his sister's talent but not his and just send him here as her escort. Zhang Yun thought that his talent was probably similar to Lan Lan's, but years of life could not be taken away from him. But neither before nor after his rebirth, no one managed to see it, but why? Could it be that the golden sarcophagus activated his talent? but they still can't detect it. If he wants to know the truth, he needs to take another look at that sarcophagus. He said that they shouldn't talk about the past, everything suits him. 
Li Wen returned to the table and said that she would take a closer look at his skills. His freeze level is quite high, this should be enough for the battle. She saw another skill and asked where he got it from. This can only be obtained by absorbing the crystal of a beast, the hunting of which is prohibited, how is it made? Oh well, it doesn't matter, he still managed to do it. She asked, what kind of charm is that? Can he demonstrate it? He sighed and replied that he wasn't very good at it. She said that since he absorbed this ability, he should use it, it should not be underestimated. He agreed and, activating the ability, smiled sweetly at her. She asked, is that all? He replied that he had already used this ability. She thought, then why doesn't she feel anything? She can't hurt his feelings. She doesn't care that the ability is useless, he makes up for it with other abilities. She started typing something on the keyboard and asked what their family's income was. He was surprised and she said that it didn't matter, she would just write 50,000 so that he could apply for a better scholarship. In addition, there is a nutrition program for students. They will be given four bottles of milk every day, there will be no extra. With his grades, there shouldn't be a problem getting a scholarship, he can even be transferred to another class. Zhang Yun thought, is his ability really so weak that it doesn't have any effect on her? Liu Wen said that level 4 regeneration is extremely rare, so this is quite useful. Zhang Yun wanted to say something, but she interrupted him and said that for clarity, he can cut off a piece of hair, the first level of regeneration is capable of growing up to 10 centimeters of hair. She approached him and told him not to move, after which she cut off a tuft of his hair. After that, he used the ability of regeneration and his hair grew to his waist. Her hair blocked his entire view and he asked if she could lend him money for a haircut. After that, he left her office and thought that this weakness greatly reduced all his characteristics, but did not affect the final effect of regeneration. At the same moment he collided with some guy and fell to the floor. He asked him for forgiveness and said that he did not see where he was going. He looked at this guy and thought, why should he apologize for knocking him down? Suddenly he noticed his uniform and thought, is this the uniform of another academy? He noticed that he was looking at him with an admiring glance and thought, what's wrong with him? While Zhang Yuan was sitting on the floor, the guy looked at him and thought that he had bumped into a beautiful high school girl. As if the action takes place in some kind of romantic manga. She has long hair, she is gentle and beautiful. His heart can't stand it. Even if the voice is rough, it's definitely a girl, right? Their student union uniform is the same for boys and girls, so he can't easily determine the gender, he'd better ask about it. He walked up to Zhang Yuan and asked what her name was. Zhang Yuan thought that he had already apologized, why did he need his name? He doesn't need trouble, he needs to run away quickly. With this thought, he ran out of the corridor, and the guy was surprised at this. He walked to the door of Liu Wen's office and knocked, thinking that it doesn't matter, he will deal with matters, and then asked his sister to find this girl. Liu Wen allowed him to enter and he went inside. He greeted her and said that his name was Zhang Tianchuo, he was the president of the student council of Huangling Academy. He came to discuss the competition. Liu Wen greeted him and told him to sit down. After a while, she poured him tea and said that representatives from both sides were always responsible for the organization. Why do they want her to run the organization? He replied that they simply see the same faces year after year and lose interest. They will be the host this year. He hopes they'll give their freshmen a chance because they're the ones who stand up for them. Li Wen thought that last year their legendary trio took part in the competition. It's not surprising that he came to her and is trying to give only first-year students access to the competition. Looks like they've selected some great players. She promised him this and said that time was theirs. He replied that there would be no problem with this and she thought that all the students at their academy came from wealthy families, their level clearly exceeded the level of their students. However, they will also benefit from experiencing failures. But Zhang Yuan's strength is too great, should she announce this to the rest of the students before the competition. At this time, in the hairdresser, Zhang Yuan sat in a chair and asked the man to do something about it. He replied that he was a hairdresser, not a wizard. Zhang Lan told him that he should just turn her brother into an average, unremarkable young man so that no one would hang on to him. He agreed and after a while he did Zhang Yuan's hair. He kept his hair the same length and gave him bangs. Zhang Lan said it's great, but it doesn't have enough bows. She pulled his hair into two ponytails and suggested he make ponytails. Zhang Yuan replied that this was too much. Zhang Lan looked at him displeasedly and said that when she was little and didn't like to comb her hair, he said that ponytails are the hairstyle of the strong. He lied to her. He patted her on the head and said that she was already an adult, it was time for him to open the black magic sealed in her. She was surprised and asked what he was doing. He called her stupid and said that she was such an adult, but she bought it. If she wants to do something with his hair, she should offer him something in return. After that, they left the hairdresser and Zhang Lan said that now she can give him new beautiful hairstyles every day. He agreed and said that then he would put her hair in ponytails. She agreed and he was surprised. At this time, in the training room. 
Jiang Tianchuo's twin sister, Jiang Siyun approached Su Wanning and asked why she decided to increase her training. Is this because Zhang Yuan refused to join the team? She approached her and said that no matter what happened between her and Feng King, Zhang Yuan is his man, so it would be strange if he agreed. Su Wanning asked, so she doesn't think she's strong enough. Jiang Siyun asked, does she really think that her strength is not enough? She replied that Feng King is the strongest of them, not her. She drank some water and said she needed to exercise more. Jiang Siyun asked if she needed to train more, then what would they do with mere mortals like her? Suddenly her brother called her and told her everything. She asked what kind of spy stuff. He replied that it was nothing. He thought that she might find that beauty he bumped into in the hallway, he couldn't miss her. Before that, his sister considered him a complete zero in communicating with girls. But now they study at different academies, and he can finally step out of her shadow. He said that he wants her to help him find one girl, she is from her academy. He ran into her at the door of the teacher's room, she had black long straight hair, she looked weak and thin, and very cute. Jiang Siyun asked, so he seriously decided to hit on her. Jiang Tianchuo blushed and said that he thought he liked her. She was happy and said that her brother likes girls. Their family line will not be interrupted. She told him not to worry, she would do anything to find her. At this time, in the administration of the East China military region, and Kaij told her father that he has no idea how good he is. Her father replied that this was the third time she had spoken about him. She asked what he thought of him. He replied that he was 16 years old, but his level was much higher than that of his peers. But he has no ambitions, he doesn't want to join the team of ruins in her too, he was thrown over the hip and he just turned a blind eye to it. He doesn't care about what ordinary people care about. Common sense is not about him. It won't be easy to control him, so let her just give in. First she just needs to make friends with him. She tusked in irritation and said that she would not tell him anything anymore. Her father took out his phone and noticed that Zhang Yun's profile and level had changed. He thought that the stolen crystal must have ended up with him. Immunity to death, charm, and also the level of secrecy. However, at his age, it is too early for him to draw any conclusions, although Rob's also had similar abilities at this age. His fiery giant is a unique ability that is very important for the country. Therefore, the secret of the crystal that Zhang Yuan keeps can bring him a lot of problems, in which case he will look at it again. After some time in the hostel, the courier brought a huge safe to Zhang Yuan and asked if he changed his hairstyle. It suits him very well. Zhang Yuan replied that he wanted to cut his hair short, but his sister insisted. The courier put the safe in front of him and told him not to forget to give it five stars. Zhang Yuan agreed, and when the courier left, he began to open the safe. He entered the password and the safe opened, there he saw several crystals and thought that he had recently discovered that with their help he could level up well. There were so many crystals that by absorbing them he would definitely reach a new level. There was a note in the safe that said that this was for Xuan Ming from his friend, don't let him thank him. The system reported that crystals were detected, does he want to absorb them? He absorbed all the crystals and the Fury Strike ability increased to the green maximum level. The Fury Strike ability has been improved and he has gained a new Combat Master ability. The description of this skill said that he was born to kill, he is proficient in all types of weapons and can kill the enemy of life with one blow. Zhang Yun thought that there were still a lot of crystals, he felt he could continue improving. He has upgraded the Combat Master to the red maximum level and received a new ability tit for tat of the yellow level, which he can improve. To improve this ability, he needs the maximum level of Combat Master. This ability improves Combat Master by 100%. Tit for tit has increased to the green maximum level, now Combat Master has improved by 1000%. The tit for tat ability has been improved, he has received a new ability Blood for Blood of the Red 8th level, which he can improve. This improves the Combat Master by 1000%. When attacked, this ability absorbs the enemy's strength and creates a recoil of up to 300% of the owner's strength. He thought that the teacher said that the crystals contain the negative energy of a dying monster. He hadn't felt this before, but it seems to him that it's all about quantity. He doesn't need sleep, but for some reason he feels sleepy. In the future he shouldn't consume everything. With his promotion, he received several new abilities, his attack power increased 10 times. Maybe it's thanks to those snake crystals. Can all animals really improve their abilities so much? It gets stronger with every improvement. In the past he was pulled into that sarcophagus and now after his rebirth. Suddenly Feng King interrupted his thoughts and, covering his eyes with his hands, told him to guess who. At that moment, Feng King's scream was heard and Zhang Yuan said that he was lucky that he didn't break his arm. Feng King said that he called him, but did not answer, he just stood there in a daze. Zhang Yuan asked why he came. Feng King healed himself and said that he was here to remind him about the student council meeting. At this time, Zhang Ruo asked the rest of the student council, isn't the absence of the chairman and Zhang Yuan too much? Shan Guan said that there is no point for any rubbish to take up space here. 
Feng King entered the room and said that he would now introduce them to the new council member. His name is Zhang Yuan. He is in his first year of study and is in a special class. He told him to say hello and Zhang Yuan greeted everyone. The guy asked, is that all? Isn't it too short? Feng King pointed him to a chair and told him to sit down in the empty seat. He sat at the head of the table and Zhang Ruo said that this was the chair's seat. He looked up at her with a dissatisfied look and asked, can't he sit here? She thought that obviously Feng King wants to make Zhang Yuan president. She must behave sensibly. She rolled a chair over to Feng King and told him to sit down and she would bring another chair. Suddenly Shane Guan told them to stop. He called out to Zhang Yuan and said that he was a despicable brat. He got here by dishonest means. If he takes a risk, then let him accept his challenge. Zheng Ruo tried to stop him, but he still continued to shout insults at him. She asked him to shut up. He shouted that he was an idiot. He just sold his sister. At his age, he achieved everything himself. Zhang Yuan got angry and said that he dared to say something about his sister, but he wouldn't let it go so easily. Shan Guan asked, is he thinking of bluffing? If he is not a weakling, then let him accept his challenge. Zhang Yuan agreed and said that if he played, he would apologize to his sister personally, and then kneel down and hand out steamed buns in the cafeteria every morning. Feng King started filming it on his phone and told Shan Guan to listen to his advice, let him not do it. Shan Guan got angry and asked Zhang Yuan, does he think he will be scared by his conditions? No matter how it is, today he will show everyone what he really is. He accepts these conditions, but if he loses, he will leave the academy. Zhang Yuan agreed and Feng King tiredly grabbed his head. He said that he was a witness, but he would clarify, no one should die during this battle. Zhang Yuan and Shan Guan stood opposite each other and Zhang Yuan told him to attack. Shan Guan used explosive flames and increased his strength by 150%. He attacked him and said that he was just about to do it. Zhang Yuan stepped aside and Shan Guan said that this is impossible. He wondered, had he really missed? No, but how did he dodge it then? Zhang Yuan looked at him and thought that thanks to his new ability, his blows look 40 times slower in his eyes, but he is definitely stronger than the same Feng King, such a one cannot be killed with one blow. Immediately after that, Shan Guan wanted to kick him and said that he could not avoid this kick. He hit him somewhat, but Zhang Yuan did not react at all and Feng King thought in surprise that only a few could withstand such a blow, this guy is not without an ace up his sleeve. Ten minutes later, Shan Guan lay tiredly on the table and thought, how is this possible? Obviously he is strong, but why did he never try to attack him? Maybe he looks down on him. Immediately after that he attacked him and said that he was a coward, let him stop hiding his abilities. Zhang Yuan sighed wearily and said that he was so tired of him. Shang Guan pointed a fiery fist at him and told him to blame himself. At one point he thought, why isn't he trying to dodge? If he hits him, he will die. He hit him, tearing his clothes and thought that he would only have enough time to restore half his energy. At this moment, he suddenly opened his eyes and Shang Guan's hand broke. He fell to the floor screaming and Zhang Yuan thought that he knew that he needed to stop, but he continued anyway. Zhang Ruo ran up to Shan Guan and examined his wound. At this time, the guy was filming everything and said that he called himself a witness and took 209th place on the list. Zhang Yuan will also be on the list after this battle. Another guy said he was strong, very strong. He broke a man's arm, barely touching it. The girl said that this thug deprived him of his position on the disciplinary committee, what a shame. Feng King walked up to Zhang Yuan and said that he promised not to beat him to death, but in the end he almost killed him with one blow. He doesn't like it. Zhang Yuan asked what he was talking about. He stood here and didn't move, and he also tore his clothes. Feng King said that his arm was broken, does he mean that he didn't attack him? Zhang Yuan sighed and thought that he was so tired of all this. Will that charm thing work? He used charm and said that it was not his fault, it was all him. Feng King exclaimed, didn't he study physics? He's never heard of how recoil works. Zhang Yuan thought, why didn't it work? Why is this ability so useless? Feng King picked up his disused uniform and said that he would find him a new uniform. Zhang Yuan asked, did he know that it would all end like this? He replied that he assumed. Zhang Ruo turned around and asked, after everything, does he still have the conscience to joke? Let him cure him immediately. Feng King asked since when has he been under her command? Does she think she has the right to tell him what to do and when to do it? He lazily sat down on a chair and said that he himself started all these provocations, refused to listen to him and insisted on his own so he would not treat him. Other members of the council began to whisper and one of them said that in fact Zhang Yuan had really just been dodging the blows all this time, but this was very strange. This guy doesn't know right from wrong, how dare he challenge Feng King's man. Someone said he thought he deserved it. Zhang Ruo heard their words and thought, what is wrong with them? They were originally against it and now they are trying to protect Zhang Yuan. They don't usually behave like this. She took the phone and thought that it doesn't matter, she needs to send Shang Guan to the infirmary as soon as possible. 
After a while, people from the academy security came to the student council room and put Chan Guan on a stretcher. The guy said that they should contact the infirmary, they need to prepare for first aid. One of the guards approached Jiang Ruo and asked what happened. Who did it to him like that? Zhang Yuan walked up to them and said that it was him. Fang King said that it was a fair duel, he is a witness. The guard said it didn't matter what it was. The guy has serious injuries, they can't just leave everything like that, so don't let them make their job more difficult. Fang King asked, is he threatening him? He replied that it wasn't, he was just following the rules. Zhang Yuan touched Fang King's shoulder and said that it's okay, he will go with them. He doesn't think he's above the rules, and let him not tell his sister about it. Fang King thought, does he trust them? Okay, since he decided to trust them, he will give them a chance. The guy escorted Zhang Yuan into the room and thanked him for his cooperation. Until the management gives a final verdict, he must remain in this isolation ward and is prohibited from leaving. Zhang Yuan asked, won't they take away the phone? The guy replied that there was still no signal here. Zhang Yuan looked at the bed and thought that he was really sleepy, he would just lie down and take a nap. He turned off the light, closed the crack and thought that this was much better. He was left in complete darkness and thought that it would be better if the room was smaller and the bed was closed on all sides. Why did he come up with such a strange idea? It doesn't matter, he will turn on super perception and if someone approaches, he will immediately wake up. He fell asleep and thought that this was a dark and calm world, here it was, his final destination. At this time, two guards were watching him from the observation room and one of them said that this guy really just turned off the light and went to bed, he's a great guy. The second guard asked if he was just pretending to sleep to relieve tension. His friend said that he was putting down a packet of hot chips and that he would be here in about five minutes. The guard said he would give him ten minutes. After a while, in the director's office, the principal looked at the documents and said it was time to revise the curriculum. Duyan said that they need to start by making sure that these changes apply to all academies in the district, not just their academy. The director told him to look here, minimum 85 points in all subjects. If they fail the midterms, they will not be able to participate in the league. Shang Guan failed all subjects, and Zhang Yuan received the highest score. Shouldn't there be a replacement? Gu Yan said that Captain and said that the last battle made her realize the importance of knowledge. Suddenly a security guard burst into the director's office and said that the medical staff in the infirmary could not provide assistance in time and the guy's hand could not be saved. The director asked, what about Feng King? The guard replied that he was there, but refused to treat him. The director grabbed his heart and said that if he lost his hand, then, accordingly, he lost everything. Gu Yan asked him not to worry. The most important thing is to figure everything out. He knows what his character is. They can ask the captain to change his mind. After a while, Feng King looked at the phone and saw that Nguangfeng was calling him. He thought, if they couldn't get through on the phone, they'd just set the director on him. They really are something. He answered his call and asked, he probably decided to ask him about the current situation, right? And Guangfeng replied that this was not so, he was not to blame for what happened, but he was obliged to cure the guy. Zhang Yuan is a rare talent, he trusts them, and they should not lose that trust. He will not bear any responsibility no matter what decision he makes. He knows him better than anyone. He thinks, he has his own opinion about whether he should be saved or not. Feng King thought and after a short pause replied that he understood him. After he ended the call he saw Lan Lan walking with a plate full of food. He called out to her and she looked at him questioningly. He asked, is she going to eat at all? She asked if she couldn't. By the way, wasn't her brother at the meeting today? Why didn't he come with him to the dining room? Feng King replied that her brother was bitten by a dog and is now receiving a rabies injection in the hospital. Zhang Lan became worried and he said that he was fine, just a couple of scratches. But she knows that an injection should be given in such a situation, even with a minor injury. She looked at the food upset and he asked why she only eats spicy chicken. He will scold her brother. She asked him not to tell him this and said that she just took too much and she didn't feel comfortable giving up. Feng King said that he could share the rice and vegetables with her and she would give him half of her chicken. She asked, does he tolerate spicy foods well? He replied that there was nothing wrong with trying something new. They sat down at the table and Zhang Lan said that the signature spicy chicken in the cafeteria was very tasty. She promises he won't be able to tear himself away from it. He asked, is this true? He tried the chicken and thought it was very spicy. Do people really eat this? He shouldn't have believed her. He began to quickly chew it and she asked, how did he like it? Let him say it's delicious. He showed her a thumbs up and said it was very tasty. But in reality it was not so, his mouth was simply burning from such sharpness. After he chewed the chicken, he said that the dog that bit his brother was taken under the wing of the student union president. The dog bit him because it didn't know him well. At first her brother wanted to bring it to her, but changed his mind after the attack. Zhang Lan asked why they need this dog. Are you sure her brother isn't seriously injured? Feng King smiled and said that's for sure, he beat that dog well. 
does she think they should cure this dog? Zhang Lan asked if it would attack him in the future. Fang King adjusted his glasses and said that this would not happen, he would protect him. Zhang Lan chewed the chicken and said that then the dog needs to be cured. After a while, in the infirmary, the director stood next to Shang Guan's hospital bed and asked Gu Yan, is he going to call the military prosecutor? He replied that out of 24 hours there were only two left for treatment. If Fang King doesn't come, then no one can help him. Hearing this, Shang Guan told them to go home, while they are here, he cannot rest properly. Zhang Ruo invited them to leave and said that he should be alone. The director agreed and told Shang Guan to take a good rest. After they left, Shang Guan thought, why was he so stupid? Knowing that this guy was chosen by Feng King, he still doubted his strength. How many times was he told not to start a showdown? How dare he disturb such a strong man? He sobbed and thought that even if Feng King didn't cure him, he deserved it. Suddenly Feng King interrupted his thoughts and asked, does he regret what he did? Hearing this, Shang Guan fell to his knees in front of him and said that it was his fault, he really didn't want this. He begs him to help him. Feng King touched his shoulder and told him not to cry, after which he healed him and Shang Guan looked at his hand. Feng King went to the exit and said that he was lucky he did not kill him in public. Next time no one can save him, let him remember to fulfill his promise. His arm is only intact because his sister doesn't want a lame dog. At this time, in the observation room, one of the guards said that a whole day had already passed. Is this guy sleeping too hard? Another guard said that he brought him food several times, but he did not react. Maybe he's just pretending to be asleep. Another guard asked if it was normal that he had not eaten, drunk or gone to the toilet for so long. Gu Yan entered the room and said that the investigation was completed, why haven't they released him yet? The guard replied that it was not they who were not letting him out, he himself refused to leave. Gu Yan said that he would take a look at it himself. He entered the isolation ward and told Zhang Yuan to get up. He turned on the light and said that the issue was resolved, he would not bear any responsibility. He should go back to the dorm and get a good rest. He noticed that he was not reacting to him at all and decided to touch him. He asked why this guy is so cold. He put his hand to his mouth to check his breathing and told the guards to quickly call a doctor. One of them asked if they could call Feng King. Another guard asked how they would tell him that something happened to him while he was in solitary confinement. Let him call the chief doctor. After that, the doctor ran into the room and said that he was just getting ready to go home, and they called him. This is some kind of mockery. The guard said that if the situation was not urgent, they would not have called him. The doctor approached Zhang Yuan and said that first he needed to examine him. He used his abilities on him, but Zhang Yuan did not react at all and blood gushed from the doctor's mouth. The doctor pulled back and the guard caught him and asked what was wrong with him. The doctor rushed to run and said it was too cold. It's hopeless. After what happened, Gu Yan called in Guangfeng and told him about the situation. And Guangfeng said that in his chart there was a record that he had already entered a state similar to hibernation, so everything was fine. Gu Yan asked where these records came from. He replied that the recordings were provided by Feng King. Gu Yan ended the call and told the guards that the commander said everything was fine. One of the guards said that they couldn't let him sleep in the isolation ward forever. Another guard said that he heard that raising the temperature brings animals out of hibernation, maybe they should try it. They placed heaters around Zhang Yuan and said that winter is over, let him wake up. Spring has come, it's time for the animals to wake up. Gu Yan joyfully called out to Zhang Yuan and said that he had been presented with a reward for his services during the last mission. He needs to wake up to get his prize. The security guard said that he has a bunch of photos of awesome girls in excellent quality. When he wakes up, he will send them to him. Zhang Yuan did not react in any way to their attempts to wake him up and the guard asked what they should do. They have no other options. Another guard said that in this condition, returning him to the dorm would not be so easy. Gu Yan said that they need to do something, let them call Feng King. While they were deciding how to wake up Zhang Yuan, he was immersed in a dark space. Time doesn't flow here, this is the other side of the world. He needs to stay here, to merge with it. Suddenly the words that someone had attacked his sister echoed in his head and he opened his eyes. He jumped out of bed and grabbed Feng King by the clothes and asked what did he just say. The two guards hugged each other and were happy that he had finally woken up. Gu Yan asked Zhang Yuan if he was okay. Maybe he should be sent for examination. Feng King grabbed Zhang Yuan by the hand and leading him to the exit said that everything is fine, he doesn't need an examination. It's time for them to have dinner. After they left there, Zhang Yuan looked at the date and asked, has a day passed? Why does he feel like he just lay down? He thought, why didn't his super sense wake him up? He said it was strange that he was released so easily. Feng King said that he was supported by the commander. Would a simple director dare to object to him in any way? Zhang Yuan asked, commander. Feng King replied that he was the commander of their military region, the father of Ankaij. He doesn't know why he stood up for him, maybe he was interested in him for something. Zhang Yuan thought that he used to think that if they attacked him, he would simply raise the academy to the ground. Well, so be it. 
He asked, didn't he say that his sister was attacked by someone? Feng King scratched his head and replied that it was nothing, everything was within the limits of what was permitted. Twelve hours ago, Zhang Lan was riding the train and crying that she lost. The guy sitting next to her said that the students at Huangling Academy were all from rich families, and they started training before them. This Shangxi is very strong, the fact that she dared to fight him is already worthy of respect. He wouldn't even dare look at it. Zhang Lan exclaimed that a loss is still a loss. She doesn't like excuses, obviously she's not strong enough. She will work hard and become stronger. Liu Wen was sitting in front of them and thought that this trip was supposed to boost her morale. Zhang Lan called Feng King and said that she had a request. Her brother said he was a pretty good fighter. She wants him to help her get ready. Currently, Feng King told Zhang Yuan how it all happened and he asked, so did she really sign up for the competition without telling him? So, to prepare, she came not to her brother, but to him. Feng King noticed his menacing gaze and told him not to look at him like that. He admitted everything himself. He did it all for him, does he understand? He began to worry and said that seriously, she did not receive a single injury. She must have thought that through the competition she could avenge her brother. Zhang Yuan stretched his fists and asked, what is the name of the person who hit his sister? At this time, at a social evening, one of the students of the academy said that he could easily defeat their five fighters. They are all weaklings, he doesn't even need two hands to win, one is enough. At this time, Jiang Tianchuo and his friend were watching him from afar. His friend said, he keeps bragging and humiliating them, should they leave it like that? Jiang Tianchuo replied that they should not interfere yet. He came here to participate in the academy league. His family invested more than 200 million yuan in this competition. They decided to use the discussion between the academy representatives to drum up interest in the competition so they wouldn't lose face. It's a shame none of their freshmen can beat him. Suddenly they heard dissatisfied screams from the side. Someone's voice told the guy to immediately come to him, he would unscrew his head. Jiang Tianchuo asked what's going on. His friend asked if he had really come. It's only 11 now, formally the competition hasn't ended yet. Jiang Tianchuo walked out of the banquet hall and said that he would go and have a look. After he left, he saw Zhang Yuan and Feng King with a loudspeaker shouting for the trash from Huangling Academy to come out. 